Two days later, Edie completed the extraction of Garp's bloodline factors and injected the cloned human embryos that were fused with the Lunalia family's bloodline factors into the number two special cloning chamber, becoming neighbors with Charlotte Lingling's clone. It is expected that two new earthly branches will be born in two years. As for Cyborg Kong, Edie hasn't cloned him yet. There are only three special cloning warehouses capable of cloning earthly branches, and one must be left vacant as a spare. Such as himself. In the previous war, one red flash hit dealt 100 billion damage, and one hit almost killed Cyborg Kong. The power is great enough, but the price is not small. He has permanently lost 10 billion ghost particles, and his current energy level is only 110 billion. If you want to recover, you have to wait for Duffield's experimental materials to arrive, and you will need to use the number 3 special cloning warehouse. It is estimated that it will take a few months. In the past two days, he was not entirely busy with Klonkerp. At night, I took the time to play a game of hide and seek with Peach Rabbit. This female lieutenant general was really persistent. She wanted to sneak into the underground laboratory every night in the dead of night, but he was arrested on the spot every time and was pressed against the wall and trained hard. For women who are very competitive, Edie's training is step by step, gradually breaking down the opponent's psychological and physical defense lines. He even suspected that this woman was enjoying it. Dao Tu knew how to use her beauty, and recently she wanted to get information about the earthly branches directly from him. Since it is a game, cheating and taking shortcuts are naturally not allowed. Edie decisively swallowed her pearls, and the information was not leaked. Alas, poor suitor, Lieutenant General T. Dolphin can only watch the sweet appearance of the goddess from a distance, but Edie can taste Peach Rabbit's snowy and fragrant cake. Life is always so uneven. Of course, this is just a spice in Edie's daily life, a little game he plays when he is tired from work. A mere woman cannot affect his work efficiency at all. At this time, on the second underground floor of Hive Research Institute 520, there is a blue blood laboratory filled with various experimental equipment. While Edie was cloning Cap, he used the equipment of the blue blood laboratory to rub a new ability ring. Ability Ring White Ape This is the thirteenth ring held by Edie, Cyborg Sora's Devil Fruit ability. Although there is no clone Cyborg Kong, there is still no problem in making a ring of the Phantom Beast type. As for Aokiji and Kizaru, because they are natural ability users, they can neither clone nor make natural abilities into blue blood. Let me first see what the white ape is capable of. Edie put on a new ability ring. After it was activated, blue blood was injected from the fingertips. In an instant, he became an esper and acquired the form of a white ape. His handsome appearance gradually changed, white monkey hair grew on his temples, extending to his chin, and his hair began to grow longer, whiter, and curled. The nails on both hands turned black, the palms became larger and more powerful, the chest also swelled, as if it was inflated, and a monkey tail grew out of his back. Human Animal Form Edie shook her right palm and fell into deep thought. Animal Type Monkey Fruit Phantom Beast Type White Ape Form in addition to possessing the basic physical enhancement of the phantom beast species, its special abilities are very simple. Embodiment of emotions The stronger the emotion, such as anger, etc., even if you are physically exhausted at the moment, as long as the emotion is in place, you can burst out with powerful power. No wonder. Cyborg can still explode with an energy level of 290 billion before dying. Eddie released the human animal form and put away the white ape ring. He didn't need the ability to do sit UPS. He used to think that Cyborg Kong burned his soul, but now it seems that it's not, but the phantom beast species. Special Ability To be honest, this ability is quite strong. If he hadn't eaten his 100 billion level red flash in the first place and wanted to kill the opponent, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, any earthly branch present at the time would have it will take a long time. After shaking his head, Edie turned and left. Walking out of the basement door, 
Shen Ho waited outside the door conscientiously. Lord Heavenly Father! What's up? As he spoke, Edie released the color of his knowledge, and countless ghost particles spread in all directions. He instantly grasped all the conditions of the Hive Research Institute. Then he discovered that Hancock, Tianyoshi, and Daota were all at the same time. Stay in the living room. The sound of their conversation reaches my ears. Hum, I hate the Navy. Why, little girl? It's Peach Rabbit's voice. What's up with your title? I am already an adult, please call me Heavenly Mother. Does this girl usually call herself a concubine in front of others? A trace of confusion flashed in Edie's eyes. When did it start? After becoming the Heavenly Mother? At this time, Shen Ho seemed to want to report something, but Edie raised her hand to stop her. He wanted to listen. Listen, what are these three people talking about? Yes, Lord Heavenly Mother. Peach Rabbit responded perfunctorily in a coaxing tone. Hancock was satisfied, but still said Navy, are you trying to sneak into the underground laboratory late at night these past few days? This is not allowed. No one can enter or leave that place without permission from Lord Edie. After a pause, he said proudly I am Lord Edie's Heavenly Mother. She is like a wife. I must help Lord Edie manage the Research Institute. You better explain it, Navy. Hive Research Institute, between the left eye. This is a very luxuriously decorated living room. The large crystal chandelier on the ceiling of the living room alone is worth more than 30 million belly, which is more than Monkey D. Luffy's when he just went to sea. A head is even more valuable. The three women were sitting on the sofa in the living room. Dao Tu fell into a brief silence as he listened to what Hancock said. Wife? Damn, she's only fourteen. That man is really capable. Tian Yuxi had a smile on his face. With a gentle smile, she was just drinking tea alone. Peach Rabbit didn't know it when she first came here, but she still knew it very well. Mr. Edie was not hungry enough to attack fourteen-year-old Hancock. It was just the little girl calling herself. Of course. She also understood in her heart that although she was also called Heavenly Mother by the earthly branches, her status was far inferior to that of Hancock. In the hive, Hancock was beneath one person and above ten thousand people. However, in recent days, her daughter has been his salary has finally improved, and he has become more cheerful. The smiles that were rare in the past, by the can now be seen from time to time. It's not in vain. Tianyu sighed inwardly. By now, she has seen it's open. With her meager resources, she is lucky to be favored by Mr. Edie and get a man she can rely on. Now, she just wants to please Mr. Edie, hoping that one day, she can let Hiri return to the country of Wano and take back the homeland from the evil dragon Kaido. Mr. Edie seems not to hesitate to Momonosuk. It would be great if he can make Hiri a female general. Amazuki thought silently, outside of the war, looking at the other two people quietly. Daoto couldn't explain. You can't tell this little girl that your heavenly father and your husband are playing a very strange game with me. Every time you catch me, you will be cruel and frivolous. I... Miss Hancock, why do you hate the Navy? Is there anything the Navy is doing wrong? She was confused and asked. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Philo Novel Network. No, hum. Hancock recalled what happened to him, I was kidnapped by human traffickers and auctioned off in the Shambord Islands. The price reached as high as 100 million belly. If it hadn't been for Lord Eddie who saved me and my family. Sisters, I have now become the slave of the Celestial Dragon. Hearing this, Dao Tu was stunned, and suddenly thought of what happened more than two years ago. It turned out to be you, she opened her beautiful eyes. When Edie attacked the celestial dragons in the Shampoo Islands, she took away a devil fruit and three little girls. What did your navy do wrong? Hancock raised the corner of his mouth slightly and said sarcastically the navy headquarters is less than an hour's flight from the Shambord Islands 
but the justice of your navy cannot shine in such a close place. You are trash. I hate you. Well scolded, this girl. Edie couldn't help but laugh. He understood Hancock very well. Without his accidental appearance, the experiences of the three snake sisters would have been very miserable. Douto couldn't say anything after being scolded. Come out. The Shambord Islands, that is the back garden of the Celestial Dragons. The Celestial Dragons like slaves, so the slave trade on that island is open and honest, and human traffickers are everywhere. It is also because of this that the pirates on that island, as long as it's not particularly ridiculous, the navy doesn't care. Our navy will also protect civilians. Douto felt that her tone was a bit weak. Faced with the reproach of a 14-year-old girl, her words were too pale and weak, and she even wavered a little bit about the justice behind the cloak. This concubine's matter has nothing to do with you. Now you have to explain clearly why you sneaked underground late at night? Hancock snorted softly and asked, If you don't explain clearly, I will report my identity to Master Edie. You are a prisoner. Master Edie was kind enough not to imprison you, so you should be grateful. Momota was furious, and he was really grateful for the preferential treatment he received as a prisoner. I want to steal information, but it is a matter of position, which is indeed wrong in the eyes of the other party. But your Lord Edie is very scornful of me and even asked me to be his woman. Yesterday, no, it was around four o'clock this morning. She even sacrificed her appearance to get information directly, but in the end, the guy just ate his own candy and threw away all the candy coating. Damn man! But she wouldn't dare say this to Hancock. No excuse? Hancock's beautiful eyes narrowed into slits, Sonia, go tell Master Edie. Yes, Onisama. Second sister Sanda Sonia nodded immediately and turned around to complain. Etc. Dao said helplessly I know, I was wrong, Lord Heavenly Mother, please don't tell Mr. Edie. K.O. As a Heavenly Father, Edie took back her words when she heard this. It's a bit funny that Peach and Rabbit is suppressed by Hancock's aura, since the two of them are almost one zodiac sign apart in age. It's really three women performing three roles. Edie continued to let them mess around and stopped paying attention. She turned to Shen Ho and asked. What happened just now? Shen Ho immediately reported a world government ship is approaching the hive, and Viang has intercepted them. Government warship. It's not a warship. The people on it call themselves CP0, Shen Ho said, they want to see you. Heavenly Father, what should we do? Sink. Are you here to seek peace? Eddie thought for a while, but didn't think it was possible. How could the world government come to seek peace? Inform Peach Rabbit and ask her to come see me. Yes. Five kilometers away from Beehive Island a ship flying the flag of the world government was parked on the sea. On the front deck of the ship, three men wearing white suits and dark ties, all wearing masks, stood side by side. They are CP0. The organization directly under the control of the world's nobles, the Draco, is known as the strongest shield of the Draco. It is the highest level of all CP spy organizations and the strongest spy agency in the world. So slow. How long do we have to wait? Among the three, the one on the left is the shortest, about 1 meter 95. His mask has one black eye and one white, and his name is Gurnir. Now that the Navy's demon-slaying order fleet has just been defeated, the Hive Emperor is qualified to show off, so just wait patiently. The man on the right spoke in an indifferent voice. He was at least three meters tall and wore a crimson mask with an angry expression. His name was Gizmunda. The man in the middle raised his left hand and rolled up his wrist sleeve. The watch showed it's been a full hour of waiting. Even one of the New World's one emperor and three emperors has made them wait for too long. They came on behalf of the five old stars. The man thought in his heart, but there was nothing extra action. He is also tall, more than two meters tall, his name is Gregory, and he is the captain of CP0. 
Gregory looked at the sea in front of him, Viang flapped its wings, hovered in the air, and crossed his arms with his chest the one stop there. Viang, General. No, it should be called the clone of martial warring states now. Mr. Viang, waiting is also waiting, why don't we have a friendly chat? Gregory said softly. Viang ignored it, and his golden starry eyes remained calm. The war of the past few days was just a mistake, and the world government also believes that it is not wise to go to war against your hive island. Gregory did not continue speaking. He could see that the other party had no intention of communicating. Their CP0 is the most loyal agent under the world government. They can mobilize CP1-9 personnel at will and have great power. All members have passed various rigorous tests, and no one will doubt their loyalty to the Tianlong people. But even so, Gregory felt that if the five old stars issued an order for one of them to commit suicide, that person might hesitate for a moment. But these earthly branches don't. Their loyalty to the Hive Emperor is outrageous. Just like now, there is no news from the Beehive, and Wei Yang will not even say a word to them. Because they are the same kind, Gregory can understand. A general level clone has such loyalty, it's terrible. Suddenly, before the sheep moved, he turned his head and saw a warship slowly approaching from the port. That was one of the nine warships that Chen Long brought back yesterday, and now they are the trophies of Heavenly Father. The first thing I got back was to modify the navy seagull flag symbolizing peace on the sail and replace it with the honeycomb flag designed by Heavenly Father himself. Below the flag, there are B. The letter R stands for Hive Research Institute. Dao Tu stood on the deck of the warship with a blank look on his face, with the earthly branch Shen Monkey in front of him. The people in charge of driving the ship are all clones wearing uniforms, and they look almost exactly the same. Why let me come? Dao Tu couldn't help but ask Chen Ho, why are you still wearing a mask? The other four people have already taken it off. This is the command of our Heavenly Father. Shen Ho said coldly you are not the Heavenly Mother, so you have no right to order me to take off my mask. I am the Heavenly Mother, can I order you? Peach Rabbit seems to have discovered the new world. That stinky man Edi would actually give the order authority of the earthly branches to his own woman. No wonder that little girl Hancock was so arrogant just now. She said it easily it's a bit scary to think about destroying the country. She rolled her eyes and said immediately I will soon become Edi's woman and your heavenly mother. You tell me first, except for you five people on the island apart from the earthly branches, where are the other seven people? Shen Ho seemed to treat a fool. He is a clone, not a robot, nor is he artificially retarded. He has his own thinking and wisdom. Not to mention that this woman is not a woman, even if it is true, it is impossible for him to answer this kind of question, which touches the interests of the Heavenly Father. Unless the Father commands. No. Dao to aside. After staying here for a few days, she couldn't find any important information. She even suspected that the other seven earthly branches were not here at all, or did not exist. But she was not willing to go back like this. Underground she had never set foot in Edie's confidential laboratory, so she could only wander around on the underground floor, and was quickly caught by Edie every time. She couldn't see through Edie, just like now, she didn't understand at all why the other party wanted to let her come to see the CP0 agent. There was no words all the way, and soon the warship approached CP0S ship. However, the conversation between the three CP0S immediately made Dao Tua feel heartbroken. Is that Navy Headquarters Vice Admiral Mamoto, why on board? Not dead, but became a prisoner? But he was not put in jail. He was betrayed. Was it the information about the demon slaying order that she leaked? The three of them looked at each other revealing a moment of murderous intent. As CP0, they have the right to execute the traitor on the spot. At the moment when the murderous intent overflowed, Wei Yang and Shen Ho frowned together, and two overlord-like domineering auras suddenly descended on them. On the three of them. Although Dao Tuo is not Heavenly Mother, 
she is also a prisoner of Heavenly Father. If she dares to touch his Heavenly Father's belongings in front of them, it is simply a matter of life and death. CP0's expression changed slightly and he quickly gave up the unnecessary thoughts. And Dao Tu then she was completely dumbfounded. Why did she come here to meet Zero? Is it just for this kind of thing? That stinky man, a scheming bastard. Peach Rabbit was so angry that she thought the world government was going to pay him. She redeemed her, but when CP0 saw her for the first time, he actually wanted to kill her. Where is the Hive Emperor? Captain Gregory asked loudly are you Shen Ho? On behalf of Heavenly Father, I will explain my purpose. Shen Ho said calmly. We want to meet your Heavenly Father. Gregory's tone deepened the matter is of great importance and needs to be negotiated in person. After waiting for an hour, another earthly branch has arrived. What's the point? Shen Ho said explain your intention and give you one minute. If you exceed the time limit, you will immediately exit the 10 km territorial sea of Beehive Island, otherwise we will sink you. Hearing this, the faces of the two CP0s on the left and right suddenly became extremely ugly. Fortunately, they were wearing masks and could not be seen by outsiders. They have performed many tasks on behalf of the government. No matter which country they go to, even if it is a non-franchised country, they will be subject to the highest standards. Courtesy. It was the first time I encountered a situation where I couldn't even get in. What do you mean? Gregory took a deep breath. If you want to see the Heavenly Father, let the five old stars come in person, but you are not worthy. Shen Ho snorted coldly, there are still fifty seconds. You. Guernica was annoyed. Gregory raised his hand to stop him, and said decisively the five old stars will not come to the beehive, but you can ask your Heavenly Father to go to Mary Joa to meet the five old stars. Forty-five seconds left. Tisk. Gregory couldn't help but frown. Seeing that the other party was out of luck, he had to say. Regarding the war in the previous two days, Wolioxing hopes that it will end here. Regarding the great scientist Edie, Saint Satan appreciates his scientific and technological strength very much and is willing to promise the status of the celestial dragon. Before he finished speaking, suddenly, a red, brushed like overlord colored domineering force came rapidly from the Hive Research Institute five kilometers away. Hive Research Institute, between the left eyes. Edie sat on the sofa, drinking hand ground coffee made by Hancock himself. He continued to pay attention to CP0 with his knowledge, and when he heard the other party say promise the status of Tian Long, he couldn't help but sneer. The next moment, his eyes narrowed. Boom! His eyes flashed with lightning, and the overlord-colored domineering energy bursting out from his body turned into streaks of red lightning and quickly headed towards the CP0 captain. Coming soon. The status of the celestial dragon. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Philo Novel Network. The expressions of the three CP0s on the boat changed drastically, and the red lightning visible to the naked eye seemed to have hit their souls. Their bodies were unable to move, as if a paralyzing toxin had been applied to them. And even, there is a faint urge to kneel down in the direction of the hive. What a domineering look! Gregory was shocked in his heart. He could not kneel down. On behalf of the world government, he gritted his teeth and resisted the urge to worship, and shouted to the sky. Hive Emperor! I am here on behalf of the five old stars. The war is over. It was just some minor frictions and misjudgments. The five old stars are willing to grant you the status of a celestial dragon. You are a genius scientist who comes only once in a thousand years, and the government is willing to fund your research. All this I said you can go with us to the Holy Land and meet the five elders. Boom boom boom. Red lightning suddenly burst out, hitting the man's soul. With a plop, Gregory knelt down, his head covered with cold sweat and his whole body trembling. Just listen to the indifferent voice coming from the sky. Go away, if you have anything to say, let Wulaoxing come to see me by himself. See off guests. 
As soon as the words fell, the red electric light quickly subsided and disappeared in the blink of an eye, as if it had never appeared. Shen Ho said expressionlessly go away. From now on, within 10 kilometers of Beehive Island, it belongs to Beehive's territorial waters. Without permission, you are not allowed to enter. After saying that, the warship began to turn around, and Viang also lowered his body. Came to the deck. Dao To looked blank and stood there a little absent-mindedly. Wu Laoxing promised Edi the status of Tian Long? Why was the war started a few days ago? Then why did the marshal die in battle? She just stood on the deck without realizing it and followed the warship back to Rocky Port. The three people in CP0 are still kneeling, sweating profusely. What to do? What happened to the overlord look just now? It's like my soul is trembling. Go back. Gregory breathed heavily, and when he stood up, his legs were still trembling. The overlord look just now was different from other overlord looks. He even felt that if he said a few more words, the hive emperor would you can even kill him from five kilometers away. This is not a situation that we can handle. Everything will be reported to Wulaoxing, who will decide. Soon, the CP0 ship also turned around and left, fearing that if it stayed a second longer, it would be attacked by the hive. CP0's ship left. Peach Rabbit also returned to the hive on the warship. Her mind was confused and she couldn't accept it. The demon slaying fleet was defeated, the marshal died in battle, and he was captured. As a result, the higher UPS wanted to win over Edie, even giving away the status of the celestial dragon. She didn't wait for the warship to dock and stop, then she couldn't wait to step on the moon and quickly headed towards the research institute. After a while, Peach Rabbit saw Edie. You specifically asked me to go with the ship to see CP0 just so that I could see this. I didn't say anything, I didn't do anything. Eddie just smiled. Dao to aside I received preferential treatment here, which is not the treatment that prisoners should receive. Their first reaction was that they thought I was a traitor, and wanted to kill me. Although it was a misunderstanding, she still felt insulted. She endured the humiliation with Edie, and was even willing to sacrifice her appearance, just to collect information. She felt so cold. Who are the traitors? Where did you know the root of the demon slaying order fleet? Dao Tug broke the jar and asked directly. Have you given up? Edie said with a smile, sat on the sofa and opened her arms to her come into my arms. Peach Rabbit gritted her teeth and stared at him angrily. She really wanted to admit defeat, 817, but as soon as she saw Edie's proud expression, she didn't want to admit defeat. Hey, I'll find out for myself. Edie smiled and said nothing. Dao Tu thought for a while and then said Wu Lao Xing is willing to give you the status of Tian Long, why do you want to drive them away? It's just a temporary measure. Do you think the five old stars, who are inherently evil, want me to become a celestial dragon? Edie shook his head and said disdainfully being a Tian Long, what good will it do to me? What he wants can be obtained by relying on his own strength. There is no need to become a celestial dragon and work as a dog for the five old stars. Besides, Peach Rabbit doesn't know that there is a king of celestial dragons living in the holy land of Mary Joa one of the twenty kings who created the world government 800 years ago, Nero Niam, the five old stars will kneel down and worship him when they see him. He is the real king of the world behind the world government. Edie does not know the gender of the other party, nor I don't know how strong this person is. As the so-called gentleman does not stand behind a dangerous wall, how could he go to the holy land Marijoa? Those old men treat people as fools. Their purposes are nothing more than two. First, eliminate the impact of defeat, second, find a way to obtain the cloning technology in my hands. After hearing this, Dao Tu thought for a while, and it seemed that it was indeed the case. She sighed, sat across from the sofa, picked up the coffee on the table and drank it in one gulp. Edie was silent for a while and reminded that's me of. Puff. Ahem, Dao Tud choked herself to death, 
and coughed why didn't you tell me earlier? You enjoyed my embarrassment, weren't you happy? She suspected that Edie deliberately waited for her to finish drinking before speaking. Edie shook her head helplessly don't worry, you will be anxious later. She is a 25-year-old woman, her brain is a bit slow, and she has reached this point, and she still hasn't realized the problem. What should I be anxious about? Dautog put down the coffee cup, sighed again, and smiled instead I am very free here. I think I can stay forever. When I have collected enough information, I will sneak away. Her mentality was good. But soon, she felt bad, and she understood what Edie meant by you will be anxious later. That night, the news of Shi Jing once again spread throughout the world. Peach Rabbit, who was wandering around Beehive Island, reached out to catch a newspaper that fell from the sky. Before she could open it, there were already people pointing and talking around. Oh! That's it, that's what happened. No wonder the marshals died in the battle. After she became a prisoner, she moved freely here without being tortured. Master Viang was very respectful when he saw her. It turned out that she was one of our own from the beginning. Gee, he actually let a spy lurk inside the navy and became a candidate for general. As expected of the Hive Emperor, when did the layout begin? Awesome, I admire you. Dao Tol looked around at the people around him and found that many people were reading newspapers. They gathered together in twos and threes and kept talking. They seemed to be talking about her. Dao Tu had a bad feeling, lowered his head, opened the newspaper and started reading. Next, she was shaking all over, and her breasts were so angry that they swelled. The real reason for the defeat of the demon slaying fleet? Navy trader, Mamo Sejun. The person who referred to her as Edie in the news joined the Navy very early and gradually climbed to the position of Lieutenant General or even Candidate for General General. It has been lurking like this for a long time, until recently the world government chose to launch a demon-slaying order against the Hive. As a traitor, she betrayed the fleet's intelligence, causing the Navy to encounter a maritime interception by the Hive in the waters of Etver. The ambushed Navy suffered huge losses, and the Navy Marshal died in battle. It can be said that the main culprit for the defeat of the Demon Slayer Order is her, Vice Admiral of the Navy Headquarters, Momo Yusajian. At the same time, there was also a reward order included in the news. Peach Rabbit Jun Former Vice Admiral of the Navy Headquarters, Candidate for General. Only allowed to be captured alive. Bounty, 823 million baileys. Peach Rabbit seemed to have lost his soul and walked towards the Hive Research Institute like a zombie. She never imagined that one day she would become a bounty criminal. Why? Even if the CP0 people think she is a traitor, is Wolao seeing a fool? Believed so easily. Without even waiting for a moment, a reward order would be issued for her that night. At this time, the CP0 ship hasn't returned to Red Harbor yet, right? What about the people in the headquarters? Lieutenant General Garp, Lieutenant General Aokiji, Lieutenant General Kizaru, and her suitor, Lieutenant General T. Dolphin. Why didn't anyone speak for her? How could she be an undercover agent? She and Lieutenant General He are sisters, and they almost grew up in the Navy. Why? 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 Peach Rabbit was disheartened and even wanted to laugh. What's the point of collecting intelligence here? Just like this, I returned to the research institute with confused thoughts and came to the entrance of the underground laboratory. Shen Ho at the door saw her and greeted her respectfully. Miss Jun. Where's Edie? Lord Heavenly Father is in the research institute below. I want to see him. Shen Ho didn't stop him and just got out of the way. Seeing this, Dao Tu understood. She took a deep breath, tightened the newspaper in her hand, passed through the iron gate of the entrance, and walked down the steps step by step. In a laboratory inside, she saw Edie busy. Coming. Edie didn't look back. She was wearing rubber gloves on her hands and was busy operating some experimental instruments. To read Baoz Huang novels, go to Feel Novel Network.
Did you know it would be like this during the day? So, you deliberately let me show up in front of CP0 people? Dao Tu asked expressionlessly. Edie paused, turned around slowly, took off his rubber gloves, and said with a smile. Oops, are you crying? Answer me, stinky man. Peach Rabbit was itching his teeth with hatred. I could probably predict that it would turn out like this, but I didn't expect that Woolioxing would be so anxious. Eddie also felt very surprised and said helplessly just like I won't go to the Holy Land Mary Joa, the five old stars don't dare to come to the beehive. After a pause, he continued to explain. So, they won't try to woo me again. However, we still need to find a way to solve the Navy's defeat and eliminate some of its negative effects. The biggest scapegoat, Cyborg died in the air, and you happened to be captured by me, so you are the natural candidate to take the blame. I'm just speeding up the process by letting someone from CP0 see you. Believe me, I didn't expect that Woolioxing would be so anxious and use you that night to put the blame for the defeat on you. I'm sorry. Eddie's tone was more sincere. At first, he just wanted this woman to recognize the reality. It's pointless for you to collect information from me. But I didn't expect it to be so powerful. Dao Tu felt like his belief collapsed. It seems that whatever you have been holding on to is no longer important, it no longer matters. Ha ha ha. Peach Rabbit smiled, a relieved smile, a beautiful smile. I know that our Navy's justice is not real justice, and it cannot even save the three sisters who are about to be auctioned as slaves in the Shambord Islands, only an hour's flight away from our headquarters. That girl Hancock is right, we are trash, we are just the dogs of the Celestial Dragons. When we are no longer needed, even the Lieutenant General of our headquarters can throw them away at will. Edie, you like me. At this point, Dao Tu raised a coquettish smile on her lips, and the cloak of justice behind her naturally fell off. She opened her arms to Edie let me be your woman. Faced with the beauty's invitation, Edie naturally wouldn't refuse. He stretched out his arms to hug Dao Tu, don't get me wrong, I just like you, not you. If you want me to like you, you have to work hard. Miss Yuan. Stop talking, you stinky man. Peach Rabbit took the initiative to kiss Edie. Soon after, pieces of clothing were scattered messily on the ground. Soon, the laboratory that was supposed to be used for scientific research began to play happy music. Two years later, in 1507. Special Cloning Laboratory Edie and Peach Rabbit stood in front of three huge cloning warehouses. Among them, the filling fluid inside the clone chambers number one and two disappeared like a tide, and the hatch opened automatically with a clicking sound. Two brand new clones stepped out one after another. One male and one female. They are all around ten years old. Lord Heavenly Father. The two looked at Edie, and then at Dao Tu, hesitated for a moment, and continued to salute respectfully my Lord Heavenly Mother. Welcome, two new compatriots. Edie said with a smile from now on, you will be called Haizu and Ugly Cow. Haizu, the clone of Charlotte Lingling. Ugly Cow, a clone of Monkey D. Garp. Like the other earthly branches, the two people who just left the cabin were both ten years old, with brown skin, and a pair of black wings from the Lunaria tribe. There is also a personal mark given to them by the creator, Golden Star Eyes. Edie's eyes briefly glanced at the two of them, and finally rested on Haizu. She is not as fat as Charlotte Lingling when she was a child, and she is not that tall. At this time, she is kneeling naked on one knee, waiting for orders. Put it on. Dao Tu handed the clothes in her hands to the two of them, and the two new earthly branches immediately put them on. She turned to Edie and said it turns out that this is how the earthly branches came about the pig and the joe ox, that is to say, the real earthly branches before only five people. I never said that there are twelve people in the twelve earthly branches. You are just guessing. Tao Tu rolled her eyes at him charmingly and said angrily don't lie to me. 
The Hive Research Institute was built by you four years ago, and Chen Long and Zishu appeared in the Shampoo Islands four years ago. There is also Shen Ho, who had a fight with Shen Ho during the Warring States period. Therefore, at least three earthly branches were not born in this research institute. Edie smiled you've become smarter. I'm not stupid to begin with, you are the stupid one. Dao Tu glared at him in shame, is there a cloning laboratory somewhere else? The wisdom of the female monkey. Why don't you take a guess? No matter how much Dao Tu guesses, he will never guess that the previous five earthly branches are all extra rewards in the system simulation, and they were born out of thin air. Female monkey? Dao Tu really wants to bite this man to death. He will be 18 by the end of the night. He looks good. I am a female monkey, and you are also a male monkey who falls in love with a female monkey. Peach Rabbit pursed his lips and smiled, saying tiger and wolf words casually. Edie didn't know whether to laugh or cry. This counterattack was so sharp that he had nothing to say. Years of exercise and practice have given Peach Rabbit not only good fighting prowess, but also a slim, plump figure. In the past two years, he has favored Dao to several times more than Tian Yuxi. A man's mouth may lie, but Kunkin cannot. After winning the bickering, Dao Tu suddenly sighed now it seems that the demon slaying order two years ago was really dangerous. If the world government had made up its mind at that time, it would have been able to destroy the hive at all costs. She is now Edie's woman, and is honored as the Heavenly Mother. Her position has changed, and she naturally regards Beehive Island as her home. Looking back at what happened back then from the perspective of a man, I feel that it was really dangerous at the time. Edie shook his head the code names of the earthly branches are unique, but I never said that under each code name, there can only be one clone of the earthly branches. Ah! Peach Rabbit was surprised, and his pink lips were slightly opened. Edie smiled and did not explain. The most basic characteristic of scientific knowledge is reproducibility. In other words, all the twelve earthly branches, as long as there are sufficient resources, can be mass-produced. The reason why it is not done is that the cost is too expensive. Regardless of Shen Ho, he is a green-blooded ability user, and the ability to imitate the fruit comes from the green-blooded device on his wrist, which is similar to Bega in the plot. Same as Seraph developed by Punk. Other earthly branches, such as Wu Maviang Chen Long, and now Hai Zhu, these four people are all natural ability users. The devil fruit abilities they possess can be seen as an innate talent. The cost of building an earthly branch like this starts at tens of billions. Not only that, they are like an exquisite supercar that needs maintenance every once in a while, otherwise cloning syndrome will occur, which may lead to the collapse of the bloodline factor. In short, in one word, expensive. This expensiveness does not simply refer to money, but to some scarce resources that can be bought with money. If it can be solved with money alone, it will be simple. After thinking about it, Haizu and Chaonyu got dressed. Seeing this, Edie immediately ordered take them to familiarize themselves with the environment of the hive, and test their energy level and combat power. As he said that, he took off the glasses on the bridge of his nose and put them on Peach Rabbit. How to use this? Dao Tu touched the frame curiously. There is a start button on the left frame. It is now in the start state. When an energy level exceeding 100 million is detected, it will be displayed on the mirror. Edie taught her step by step and looked at Peach Rabbit carefully. She wore glasses and had a unique charm, just like a dignified and intellectual female teacher. Does it look good? The two have been together for two years. The changes in Edie's eyes cannot escape Peach Rabbit's observation. She is filled with joy and the corners of her mouth rise. Pretty. Edie smiled and praised. Yeah, I like to hear it. Dao Tu kissed him happily, then turned to Haizu and Chaonyu and said, Come with me. Yes, Lord Heavenly Mother. Then I'm leaving. Don't stay in the laboratory all the time. The air here is stuffy. After expressing concern for the man, Dao Tu left with the two earthly branches. 
Edie smiled slightly and fell into deep thought again after they left. In fact, the first order he gave to Haizuo and Ugly Cow, it should be, suicide. In the simulation, I will do this every time. This is to confirm whether the thought stamp is successfully engraved in the other party's blood factor. The blood factor of each earthly branch is different, so it is different for each one. Earthly branches, this is a necessary step, only in this way can loyalty be confirmed 100%. It should be no problem, there are really no extra resources, and we have to wait another two years. Edie suddenly thought of Chekhov's gun. It is a plot device in literary creation, and its meaning is simple, if you say there is a rifle hanging on the wall in the first act, in the second or it had to fire in the third act. If it wasn't going to fire, it should hang there. Then he thought of Murphy's Law. The more you worry about something, the easier it is to come true. Believe in your cloning technology. No problem. I realize this now, so I have broken this flag. The end of science is metaphysics. What superstition? This is the truth. Leave the underground laboratory and come to the Upper Research Institute to get some fresh air. As soon as he walked out of the hive door, Edie saw Hancock running towards him. Lord Edie. To read cool novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. They. 16-year-old Hancock is already 99% similar to the Pirate Empress in Edie's memory. He is also 1.85 meters tall and wears the red high heels were almost as tall as Edie. Before Hancock could throw herself into his arms, a figure moved faster than her. Uncle Edie. Yamato. Eddie was startled for a moment, and Yamato had already thrown herself into her arms. Damn it, let go of my Edie. Stinky white hair. Hancock's expression was like a ghost, and his tone emphasized the word I. Yamato's face was filled with joy of reunion, and he hugged Edie and refused to let go. Edie touched the girl's hair, and the long silky hair was tied it has a ponytail and two red devil horns on its forehead. He's grown so big. She was so small back then, but now she is a graceful girl. Mr. Edie. At this time, Yin came over and greeted him respectfully. Behind him, Caesar looked embarrassed and called for help, Doctor. Save me. Um. Edie raised his eyebrows. What did this tool man do? Soon after, the Hive Institute. Hancock takes Yamato by force, drags her out of Edie's arms, and entertains her between the left eyes. And Edie brought Yin and Caesar to the right eye. The mates brought tea and coffee. Before Edie could speak, Caesar had already ran to Edie, knelt down and hugged his thigh, crying. Doctor, save me, Kaido is going to kill me. Edi looked at Yin, waiting for an explanation. Yin took off his black mask and helmet, picked up the black tea and took a sip. Mr. Edi, he has not seriously improved the artificial devil fruit in recent months. He spends money on drinking and squandering money every day. Several bustards in Hwaja were amazed at this guy's financial resources. After Lord Kaido found out about this, he asked me to bring him to see you. It just so happened that His Highness Yamato also missed you very much, so we came together. Missing her is real. Yamato talks about Uncle Edie a lot. But Kaido specially asked Yamato to come with him. Obviously, it is not just to satisfy his daughter's longing. Edie probably understands. The so-called veranda is a brothel with flowers. There were several houses. When he lived in Hwaju, he could often see gaseous and wandering girls walking in the verandas. On some special days, he could also see the ostentation in the court of Warrens. He looked at Caesar and grinned. Misappropriate funds to go to a brothel. No, 143, no. Doctor, listen to me. Cried Caesar my research hit a wall so I just went to relax and look for inspiration. Well, it's what a man would say. Edie cursed in her heart. Going to a brothel is not the problem, but not working hard is the key point. I have been working hard to improve the success rate of artificial animal devil fruits, 
and now the success rate has reached more than 30%. But, there is no way to solve the side effects after failed awakening. I've tried various methods, but I really can't solve it. Caesar burst into tears and said, What's wrong with laughing? I named this artificial fruit the smile fruit. Without the smile, it wouldn't be worthy of the name. Edie was speechless in response to his sophistry. To write. But judging from Caesar's mental state, he is indeed driven crazy by the side effect of giggling. You can then sort out the research data and give it to me, and write a good research report. Eddie kicked Caesar away in disgust, turned to Yin and said, Isn't little Kaisa here? Xiao, Xiao Kaisi, Jin's mouth twitched, pretending he didn't hear. Lord Kaido has been practicing hard. After a pause, he continued I came to the beehive this time not to ask you for a crime, but I just wanted to ask. Lord Kaido. Before he finished speaking, Chen Long walked in. Seeing Chen Long, Yin's eyes widened in disbelief. He subconsciously mistakenly thought it was Kaido, but then he realized something was wrong. Are you Chen Long? The black wings on the back, golden star eyes, and brown skin all indicate the identity of the other party. This is the twelve earthly branches under Edie. No, the problem is not here, why does this guy look so similar to the young Lord Kaido? Jin was stunned. Chen Long ignored him, knelt down on one knee, and reported. Lord Heavenly Father, the captain of Whitebeard's first division, Marco is here and is currently at the port. Another one? What's up? Edie was surprised. He sent this year's 10 billion sponsorship fee, and... I want to ask about the progress of grain research. Edie paused while holding the coffee. Have you made an appointment? From 1503 to December 1507, Whitebeard has sponsored a total of 50 billion in research funds. I have never asked about it before, and every time I have someone send the money in the last month. It can be seen that 10 billion per year is still a bit difficult for the Whitebeard pirates. This is the first time that a captain under his command is sent to inquire about the progress of the research. As for the progress, Edie was a little embarrassed and had no energy to help the other party study the problem of grain production. Over the past two years, he has been busy working on two projects. First, the cloning of natural ability users. He currently has the blood of four natural ability users, Kizaru, Aoki, Caesar, and Crocodile. Not to mention the latter two, Aokiji and Kizaru, he had always wanted to clone them but the wall in front of him was very thick and high. A problem that has not been solved even after spending a lifetime in simulation and working with Vegapunk is still not solved in just two years. Second, the breakthrough of the energy level upper limit. Compared with the first project, this research has made great progress. In short, as long as you find a way to strengthen your soul, this upper limit will be increased accordingly. One of the reasons why the cloning base was originally chosen on Beehive Island was that there were many pirates here. More pirates means more experimental materials. He captured some of the notorious and most vicious pirates on the island and conducted human experiments on their souls on them. The progress so far is encouraging. Marco? Bring him. The thought only lasted for a moment, and Edie took a sip of the fragrant coffee gracefully. Chen Long immediately got up and went to do things. Yin kept looking at Chen Long blankly until the other party walked out of the house completely, and then couldn't help but ask. Mr. Edie, what's going on? You beast pirates didn't get the information. Eddie openly admitted the fact of cloning. After listening, Yin was silent. Lord Kaido's clone was fused with the blood factor of the Lunalia clan. It would be unbelievable if he hadn't seen Chen Long with his own eyes. Face, he simply couldn't believe such an outrageous thing. So, was Zishu lying to me? A cross appeared on Jin's forehead. Thanks to his belief for so many years, he always thought he was a mixed race. Ha ha ha, that kid is so naughty. He might have teased you at first, but I didn't expect you to believe him. Damn you little rat, 
you fooled me around. Jin's whole body felt bad, and he gritted his teeth and asked. Who did Zi Mao's clone? One Piece Roger. Forget it, being fooled by Roger's clone is almost like being made a joke by Roger. Jin's generous self-liberation. Edie said with a smile Abel, you are the only survivor of the Lunaria clan. You are undoubtedly a pure blood. There is no need to feel inferior in the future. He called Yin's real name. Yin had a speechless expression on his face. Edie smiled, stopped teasing him, and asked bluntly. What did Zio Kaizu ask you to do? Lord Kaido said that your research institute has sponsored 100 billion baileys in the past few years. He wants to ask. Yin spoke in a solemn tone is it possible to sell him a more advanced, real artificial animal devil fruit? Instead of a defective product made by Caesar. Want the green dragon fruit? Edie was noncommittal. You can bid and the beast pirates will give you a price that satisfies you. We are willing to buy ancient species or ordinary animal species. Jin is sincere. Kaido doesn't want to become fat in one bite. He has established a good cooperative relationship in the past few years. As long as the relationship is deep, he will get what he wants sooner or later. He is not so anxious. Edie smiled blue dragon fruit I won't sell it to you, but it's about the awakening of the animal system. I can help. Awakening. Jin's face was startled, do you have a way to awaken the ability user? Edie nodded. He has a way to use scientific means to stimulate the animal system and awaken the animal system users. There is a probability of failure. If it fails, do you know what will happen? In the deep sea prison of the world government, there are many animal type ability users who failed to awaken and serve as jailer beasts. To be precise, it's not a failure, it's more like the self-awareness is suppressed by the animal consciousness in the process of awakening. You go back and tell Xiao Kaizi, let him choose between the method of awakening and the clone of an ordinary animal. Hearing this, Jin nodded immediately to express his understanding. Although he did not achieve his goal, it was not without gain. He stood up and said I understand. One more thing, your highness Yamato has been missing you very much, and Lord Kaido agreed to let her stay with you for a while. After a pause, he said with a somewhat subtle expression. The princess often mentions in front of Lord Kaido that she wants to marry you when she grows up. Lord Kaido made a drunken mistake and agreed to the marriage. Of course, this depends on your personal thoughts. Goodbye, Mr. Edie. After saying that, Yin left quickly, for fear of staying a second longer. Edie was dumbfounded. Kaido really had an idea. He didn't want to be Kai, but wanted to evolve into his father-in-law. He still agreed to the marriage. Even if he was willing to accept Yamato, Xiao Kaizi will always be Xiao Kaizi, we all have our own issues. Caesar, why don't you go back to Wayno together? Edie looked at his tool angrily, go back and write the research report. If you mess around, you know the consequences. As for the research funds you misappropriated, they will be deducted from your salary in double amounts later. Yes, doctor, please rest assured. Caesar, as if he had been pardoned, quickly followed Yin's footsteps and rolled away. One of them was sent away, and soon another one came. As soon as Marco entered the door, he said straight to the point Mr. Edie, Daddy. I already know, you go back and tell Lao Bai. I will give him what he wants in two years at the latest and one year at the earliest. Edie waved his hand. Isn't it just about increasing grain production? Isn't it just a matter of having hands? Marco was choked immediately and got stuck in the middle of a sentence. Have you figured out what to do next? Edie smiled slightly and said I can develop a high-yielding grain seed, and it is almost successful. What do you plan to do with it after that? To read exciting novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. I just created a new project in my mind that is about to be successful. Dad should send it to his hometown so that everyone can have enough to eat. It's smaller, the layout is smaller. Edie frowned and said earnestly, Pony, 
don't you have any dreams? Little, little horse? Marco's mouth twitched. When he thought of his father being called Lao Bai, the title of Little Horse was not unacceptable. Dream? One of my father's dreams is to have enough food for the people in my hometown. Therefore, Lao Bai's pattern is too small. Edie hates the fact that iron cannot become steel. Please say, Marco is helpless. That's a high-yielding grain seed I developed. Haven't you ever thought about benefiting the whole world? Edie drew a planet with both hands and said emphatically the whole world. There are countless people who need excellent grain seeds. I think you should stop being a pirate and switch to selling food. Marco. Next, Edie took Marco and gave Whitebeard three constructive suggestions and seven or eight guidelines. In the end, Marco left with satisfaction. Dot very good, I was fooled again. Edie walked to the window and watched Marco fly to the port. He nodded with satisfaction sure enough, people still have to have dreams. Of course, it was not all deception. If the grain seeds are very effective, it would be a good deal to let Whitebeard sell the grain. After all, Edie is not an evil capitalist. He can barely get 70% of the profits. If he could monopolize the world's grain trade or grain seed trade, the whole world would tremble if he stamps his foot. Soon after, Dao Tu returned to the institute with Haizu and Chaonyu. Nowadays, she is no longer a vice-admiral, so she does not wear the navy's cloak of justice. Her daily dress looks a bit like a female researcher. Edie, I've finished testing it for you. The energy level of the pig is 230 billion, and the energy level of the ugly cow is 310 billion. Is this data good or bad? Eddie turned around and saw that both Haizu and Chaonyu were slightly injured. In order not to affect Beehive Island, Dao Tu asked the two to have a fight on the sea. Not bad data. Eddie smiled and nodded. The order of energy levels of the seven earthly branches under his command is as follows, first, Ziyishu, a clone of Roger, without fruit ability, with an energy level of 350 billion. Second, Wu Ma, by the clone of Beard, with a power level of 330 billion. The third place is Zhou Niu, the clone of Garp, without fruit ability, the energy level is 310 billion. The fourth place, Li Jian Zhao, is Wei Yang, from the Warring States period clone, Big Buddha Fruit, energy level 300 billion. Fifth place, Chen Long, Kaido's clone, Qing Long Fruit, energy level 250 billion. Sixth place, Hai Zhu, Charlotte Ling's clone, Soul the Soul Fruit has an energy level of 230 billion. The seventh place is Shen Ho, a clone of Kojiki Odin a green-blooded imitation fruit, with an energy level of 100 billion. Due to the accuracy of the glasses, the actual energy level is the result of rounding. Of course, the energy level is just an energy level, and it only represents the amount of domineering power. The real strength in a fight is not a comparison of data. Shen Monkey is a bit eye-catching. If the twelve earthly branches are full in the future and a newcomer surpasses him, just eliminate him. Edie thought silently. There are still five people missing. There is no need to keep the cloning warehouse empty. Two of the three cloning warehouses must continue to operate. One empty one is enough to do some necessary maintenance for the earthly branches. To prevent the occurrence of Crohn's disease. As for the prototype of the new earthly branches. It would be great if Rock's remains could be found. I wonder where Rock's body was buried. Or, go to the deep sea prison, the six levels of infinite underground hell where a large number of powerful people are imprisoned. There is also Red Hair, Hawkeye, Fujitora, Green Ox, I wonder how far these people have grown. Eddie thought about the next action plan. Red-haired Shanks, one of the future four emperors, became one of the four emperors in the plot in 1516, nine years ago. This person belongs to the late bloomer type. After Roger's death, Red Hair recruited his first partner in the East China Sea and formally established the Red Hair Pirates, 
and then began to travel around the world. Until 1510, Red sent his adopted daughter Yuta to a music capital called Ailija. Because of some accidents, he destroyed that country and abandoned his adopted daughter. After that incident, his bounty just exceeded 1 billion. In just six years from 1510 to 1516, his strength increased by leaps and bounds, and his bounty soared to more than 4 billion, making him the fourth pirate emperor in the New World. Sorting through the clues related to the red hair in his mind, Edie was not sure where this person was or what he was doing for a while. So he asked. Tutu, is there any news about a pirate named Red-Haired Shanks in the news recently? Don't call me that, it's so embarrassing. Peach Rabbit covered his face, his ears turned red, but he still answered seriously Red-Haired Shanks, a pirate who has become famous in recent years, seems to have appeared in the news last month. Just wait for me, I'll get the newspaper. As he said that, he hurried out. Edie smiled and shouted from behind Don't rabbits sound good? Tutu sounds pretty nice, why don't I call you free? Stop barking, idiot. After a while, Douto came back with a lot of news newspapers. Last month, Red Hair and Hawkeye made a fight, agreeing to have a sword duel in a month 790 counting the time, these are the last few days. What does he have that you, a busy person like you, should care about? Douto found the news from a month ago, read it for a while and handed it to Edie. Edie glanced at it briefly with a subtle expression Hawkeye is the Shishibukai. So that you don't care about the news from the outside world, Shishibukai is now fully edited. Tao Tu rolled his eyes at him, also, don't call Tutu. Tu. Okay, Bunny. Eddie nodded, and then felt something was wrong is the Shishibukai man made up? Who are the Shishibukai today? Sand Crocodile Crocodile, Hawkeye Jorak Kilmahawk. Momoto gave up resistance and reluctantly reported the names of seven people except Crocodile, they all became Shishibukai in the past two years. Edie was a little confused, having never heard of the names. But after thinking about it for a while, I quickly understood. This was probably due to the defeat of the Demon Slayer Order two years ago, which led to the world government accelerating the formation of the Shishibukai. This is the butterfly effect he brought. These people, they will have to be replaced in a few years. Edie shook his head and asked what is the reward for the highest person. It's Hawkeye. Before he became a Shishibukai, his title was a naval hunter with a bounty of over one billion. Momoto is no stranger to Hawkeye. When she was still a lieutenant general, the navy considered inviting him to join the Shishibukai. However, every time he sent people to invite him, he was severely punished by the other party because he didn't want to be disturbed. Over time, Hawkeye got the nickname Navy Hunter. It seemed that he was annoyed to death by the Navy. He killed, Jace, many sailors, and even a lieutenant general died in his hands. Besides Hawkeye, a man named Abe had a bounty of 395 million before he became a Shishibukai. With a bounty of less than four, Edie cursed in his heart where is the dual place between these two people. You care so much. I understand, you want to create clones of these two people. Peach Rabbit's eyes lit up. Edie smiled, are you a smart rabbit today? Douto became angry and said angrily if you call me Tutu again, you can sleep alone from now on. Don't change the topic, where is the dual place? Have no idea. It's not mentioned in the news, and besides, you're not a swordsman in a duel between two swordsmen. Are you going to join in the fun? Who says I'm not a swordsman anymore? Do you know how to use a sword? Dao Tu opened her beautiful eyes and said in disbelief why have I never seen you use it? You don't even have a sword. I'm a swordsman, and your hands don't look like swordsman's hands. You can't fool me. I was just not interested before, but you have no talent, Tutu. Edie grinned. After hearing this, Dao Tu immediately became dissatisfied and said angrily okay, okay, you are awesome, come and practice with me. Don't use your domineering power. 
With domineering power, she can't beat ten of them, but without domineering power, she doesn't believe it with just sword skills. How can this stinky man be better than her? Don't be impatient, wait a moment. Edie turned around, with his back to Dautu. He put his hands behind his back and looked at the blue sky outside the window. He doesn't know any swordsmanship now, but it doesn't matter. He must first grasp the temperament of a master of swordsmanship. Dauto blinked, a little I don't understand why Edie is here. The two of them know each other inside and out, and they know each other's ins and outs, and they're still talking nonsense about swordsmanship. This simulation project research on swordsmanship in the pirate world. Necessary conditions for this simulation, none. The simulation begins. Yes. Edie is going to use the system for quick success. Just in the past two years, I have accumulated another number of simulations, and now I have accumulated two times. There is no problem in consuming one to improve my swordsmanship. Anyway, I'll keep it. In the first year, you went to Haikau in front of your woman and decided to study swordsmanship. You ask Peach Rabbit for advice. Swordsmanship is not difficult for you. Your swordsmanship has improved by leaps and bounds. In the fourth year, you decide to change your teacher. You ask your subordinates, earthly branches, and Zishu, for advice. Your swordsmanship has improved by leaps and bounds. In the ninth year, you entered the realm of swordsmen. You find that the swordsmanship in this world is a bit too rough, and it's completely useless. You and Dauto competed with each other in swordsmanship and ended up in a draw. In the tenth year, as a swordsman, you decided to build a weapon of your own. The famous knives in this world can be roughly divided according to the forging process, good and fast knives with 50 knives, great knives with 21 knives, and supreme knives with 12 knives. You decide to create a supremely sharp knife. To read cool novels, go to Feel Novel Network. You started researching on forging technology. In the twelfth year, a mere knife can't stop you at all. In just two years, you have created a perfect weapon. Its sharpness, forging process, and special steel used all surpass Whitebeard's cloud cut. The Wayno craftsman who built it named it Rikawa. You held Lishuan in the competition and defeated Peach Rabbit. That night, Peach Rabbit took revenge on you severely but with strong kidney power, you won again. In the thirteenth year, this year is 1520, you saw Straw Hat Luffy's bounty on the news, with a bounty of 30 million baileys. You ignore it and continue to practice swordsmanship. In the twenty-third year, ten years later, you have entered the realm of a great swordsman. Looking back on the research on swordsmanship over the years, you still think that the swordsmanship in this world is very rough and relies entirely on force and non-turn. Maybe swordsmanship is too simple for you. You lost interest. Simulation ends. A brief simulation, only a few seconds passed in the real world. Edie never expected that her study of swordsmanship would end with her losing interest. In this simulation, a total of 10.3 billion baileys of research funds were consumed. Simulation reward, relevant knowledge and experience about swordsmanship. Should I pay 10.3 billion belly to receive simulation rewards? 10.3 billion is nothing to Edie today. He even suspects that this money is basically used to study forging technology. After all, studying swordsmanship does not consume much money. He decisively chose to pay. In an instant, a total of 10.3 billion baileys mysteriously disappeared from the vault of the Honeycomb Research Institute, turning into powder and dispersing in the air. At the same time, knowledge about swordsmanship flooded into Edie's mind. It's as if he has really practiced kendo for 23 years. Call. Edie breathed out softly. The knowledge he received this time was far less than that about ghost particles. He digested it in less than a minute. Become a great swordsman in one day. Extra reward, Lishuan. Do you want to receive it? Edie immediately received this knife that was handmade and most suitable for her. There was a flash of white light. 
a samurai sword with a sea blue scabbard appeared in front of Edi, and he caught it firmly. Behind him, Dao Tu murmured in shock. Do you really have a knife? She was not surprised that Edi conjured a knife out of thin air. She had always known that her man had space-type abilities. Come on, follow me to the rooftop. Edi smiled and took Peach Rabbit's hand, and forcibly led her to the rooftop of the Hive Research Institute. The two of them kept a distance. Edie showed off the freedom of a great swordsman and smiled at the corner of his mouth. I'll give you a chance to strike first. Don't blame me for not reminding you. I am a great swordsman. I said, I'm just not interested, and you don't have the talent. Come on, bunny. Peach Rabbit put his hands on his hips, and his chest was so angry that he was so angry, okay, okay, let's play like this, stinky man. I want you to look good today. I want you to say that I have no talent. Ding. 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 The sound of swords clashing kept ringing. Hive Research Institute, rooftop. Peach Rabbit held Jinpila in his hand and launched a lightning fast continuous attack on Edie. As a former lieutenant general of the headquarters and a candidate for general, her combat prowess was almost entirely focused on swordsmanship. He entered the field of kendo at a young age and has been practicing it for twenty years now. However, facing Edie at this moment, I felt powerless. No matter what moves she used, the opponent could always block her at the first opportunity, and she performed with ease from beginning to end. Is that okay, Bunny? Edie held Lishuan in his left hand and put his right hand in his pocket, resisting Dao Tuo's attack as if he were strolling in the garden. The two did not use any domineering force, just a simple swordsmanship competition. Dao Tu took a step back and stabbed in an instant. This the move caught the moment when Edi was distracted by talking, and it was as fast as lightning. I thought it would force Edi to move her feet to dodge, but unexpectedly, facing her lightning thrust, Edi just raised her hand to meet it. Ding with a sound, the tips of the two blades collided with each other accurately, and Mudo's Jinbaluo was blocked again. Ah! Dao Tu was stunned and frustrated I'm not coming. You're not serious at all. You keep holding the sword with your left hand. She's so angry that she can't beat her. Edie's swordsmanship is actually better than hers. Is there anything wrong with my left hand? Edie smiled. You're not left-handed. Dao Tu pursed his lips and the look in his eyes suddenly became bright and full of energy. He has a good and smart mind, handsome appearance, and is also a genius scientist. His personal strength is terrifying, and his domineering use is unmatched. Now he even has sword skills. They are all so powerful. This man is so perfect. I have to admit that even if there is no incident back then, I will fall in love with him after getting along for a long time. I have to experiment with my right hand, and I only know left-handed swordsmanship. Edie put away Lishuan, walked over, and took Dao Tu into his arms. You, what do you want to do? Dao Tu noticed that Edie's big hands were messing around with her body, and she immediately blushed and became embarrassed, it's daytime, and it's still on the rooftop. If you lose, you will be punished. No, no, people will see it. It won't be visible soon, but you can see others. Edie caressed Peach Rabbit's flawless thighs while activating her ability to ring the island. Four walls suddenly bulged out from the rooftop beneath her feet, trapping the two of them. On one of the walls, there was a kind sign left a small window opened. Dao Tu was forced to turn around, holding her hands on the wall. Through the small window, she could see the lively streets and the busy port. You. Don't mess around. Peach Rabbit's heart beat like a deer's, and she was so embarrassed that her face turned pink and her legs trembled slightly, slow down. After an hour, a door suddenly opened in the temporary small room on the rooftop, and Edie walked out refreshed. At the stairway leading to the rooftop, Zhou Niu and Hai Zhu are like two bodyguards, guarding this place loyally. Lord Heavenly Father Ask the maid to go to Peach Rabbit's room to get a set of clothes and send them up. 
Edie casually ordered. Yes. Hai Zhu immediately accepted the order and left. Zhou Niu, you and Chen Long go to the windless zone and hunt down a hundred sea kings and bring them back. Eddie pondered for a moment and gave the order again. He has not forgotten about Whitebeard. He has several ways to cultivate excellent grain seeds. One of them is to use the Neptune species. In the Neptune species there is a substance P in his body that he named P4. This substance can make living things grow larger and undergo abnormal development. If it can also have an effect on plants, then things will be easier to handle. Obey. Zhou Niu immediately took action. After sending away the two earthly branches, Edie went to the left eye and met Yamato. This little girl will live in the hive for a while. Hancock said that he was not welcome, but his behavior the boss still arranged a guest room for her. It may not be suitable for a little girl, but the 13-year-old Yamato is almost as tall as Hancock and is already a slim girl. Thanks to Kaido's genes, as a daughter, she it will be even bigger in the future. Uncle Edie Yamato is still as affectionate to Edie as he was when he was a child. Welcome to the beehive, little girl. I'm going to be away for a while, and Hancock will entertain you well for me. Eddie smiled and took Yamato off his body. Is Uncle Edie leaving? Yamato blinked, with a disappointed expression on his face. We'll be back soon. Edie turned to Hancock and said while I'm away, Hancock, you have to protect the hive well. Yes, Lord Edie. Hancock nodded obediently. Get along well and stop fighting like we did when we were kids. You all have grown up and you need to learn to be more ladylike. Edie gave a helpless warning before choosing to leave. As soon as he left, Hancock immediately changed his obedient and obedient posture, folded his hands on his chest, and snorted proudly. The smelly white hair is gone. To read exciting novels, go to Feel Novel Network. Ah? What are you talking about? Hancock. I want to call you Lord Heavenly Mother. Stupid protein hair. Why? Do not understand? Humph, I am still a child as expected. Unlike you, I have grown up. Hancock put on a proud expression of a winner the Heavenly Mother is Master Eddie's wife, idiot Yamato. From now on, I will definitely invite you as a guest to attend the wedding between me and Master Eddie guest. So. Heavenly Mother is the wife, so I will also be Uncle Edie's wife. My father has already agreed. Yamato suddenly realized. Ah! Hancock was stunned and said angrily I am the real wife. Didn't you hear what Master Edie just said? Hancock, you have to guard the hive well this is what the husband told his wife before going out. After speaking, Hancock covered his cheeks with his hands and fell into a sweet delusion but I just saw that there are other heavenly mothers. Yamato tilted his head. When Edie and Muto were playing games on the rooftop, Tianyu came here to see Yamato. The delusion was shattered. Hancock raised the corners of his mouth and said with sufficient posture that's just at my age. When I was still young, I was just a concubine who slept with me. What is a concubine? Yamato was puzzled, and suddenly remembered something and she said happily by the way, Hancock, I have learned the overlord look, look. As he said that, he stretched out his right hand, and a red electric light flashed in his palm. Hancock opened his mouth and stared at this scene blankly. This hateful white-haired guy actually has a domineering color. I haven't even awakened yet. No, I absolutely cannot lose. Edie walked out of between her left eyes, still paying attention to what was going on in the house. It was funny to hear that the two little girls were still bickering as soon as they met. I don't care about the two of them for now, as long as they don't demolish the research institute. He has more important things to do. The duel between Red Hair and Hawkeye is a rare opportunity to gain the blood factor of both of them at once. It's a pity that the location of the duel between the two was not mentioned in the news. Of course, this is not a problem for him. Edie immediately called Morgans. As the news king of the New World, Morgans was extremely knowledgeable. From the other party's mouth, 
Edie learned the location. Emperor, their duel takes place in Whitebeard's territory. Last month, when the two were scheduled to fight, Red Hair proposed to invite Whitebeard to watch the fight as a witness. Why not put it in the news? Ha 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 ha. I don't want to offend those people, and I don't want too many people to watch the duel between the two. Of course, I don't want to offend you. Edie thought for a while and asked again isn't this the first time these two have dueled? Is it so grand this time? In an era when the great pirate Golden Lion cannot hide, who is the strongest swordsman in the world today? Morgan's mouth made a strange laugh many people think that Hawkeye is already the world's number one swordsman, but red-haired Shanks is also an expert in swordsmanship. So, who is stronger? After hearing this, Edie immediately understood. Are you hyping up behind the scenes and playing with public opinion? Morgan's doesn't necessarily care who is stronger, he just wants big news. As for who is Hawkeye or Red Hair now? Is it the world's greatest swordsman, or someone else? This is not important to Morgan's at all. Thank you for the information. It is an honor for me to serve the Emperor. Cutting off the thought waves, Edie immediately left the hive. He did not bring any earthly branches with him and acted alone. Just go to Whitebeard, after all, this happened on his territory. Not long after. At night, the full moon hung high in the sky, and the sparkling sea surface reflected the starlight. With Edie's current domineering power of up to 120 billion energy levels, he can almost fly continuously. Unlike before in the capital of Seven Waters, you can't even fly back to the hive. Suddenly, Edie paused and looked at the sea below. A pirate ship was riding the wind and waves, sailing in the quiet night. He narrowed his eyes slightly, looking down from a high place, I saw several people on the deck. To be precise, they were not ordinary humans, but a subspecies of humans with hair all over their bodies. Fur people and... Is that a fur tribe? Edie watched from a high place, because the night was not very clear. In the New World, there is a giant elephant that keeps walking in the ocean. It is tens of thousands of meters tall and reaches into the sky. The fur tribe has been living on the back of this giant elephant since ancient times, and the country they formed is called the Furry Principality. They hate outsiders and rarely leave their homeland, so this race is relatively rare in the outside world. The fur people seem to have some special abilities, leopards, lions, bears. Edie saw three male fur tribesmen on the deck. He immediately smiled and lowered himself. At the same time, Knox Pirates, Ship Deck. Brother Pedro, I will keep vigil tonight. Pope Muse said. He is a lion fur tribe. He has a head of explosive golden hair. He wears sunglasses and looks very ferocious. No, you were the one keeping vigil yesterday and the day before yesterday. It's me who will do it tonight. Pedro shook his head. He is a leopard fur tribe, with a body and a leopard head and a cigarette in his mouth. At the same time, he is also the captain of the Knox Pirates. In less than a year after going to sea, the bounty on his head has increased. Soared to 382,897 Pele. No, I'll do it, Brother Pedro. No, I'll do it, Pop Musk. While the two were scrambling to keep vigil, a polar bear fur tribe holding a telescope suddenly said, Mr. Pedro, there seems to be, there seems to be a person on the moon. Is there someone on the moon? What are you talking about in your sleep, Jabo? Pachmas subconsciously looked up. Pedro quickly reminded don't stare, today is the full moon. Having said that, Tong raised his head and took a look at Jibo's gaze. At this sight, he was suddenly shocked. In the center of the bright full moon, there was a figure. The figure gradually grew larger and suddenly came in front of them. It was not the moon. There is someone, but someone flying in the sky, just blocking the moon. Pedro thought in surprise. The three of them were on guard and focused on the mysterious visitor in front of them. Pedro, Gerbo, Porkmuse, hearing the three people calling each other, 
Edie remembered who these three people were. Pedro, Roger once visited the Furry Principality and printed a red historical text from there. At that time, he met the young Pedro. This guy was deceived by Roger's words, everyone has his or her own time to appear. In 1522, he self-destructed to help Straw Hat Luffy and his gang escape from Cake Island. Jabo, Bebo's brother. Bebo is a kung fu fur bear under the command of Trafalgar Law, the captain of the Heart Pirates in the plot. The last Pokemus, this person later joined the Big Mom Pirates. Who are you? Pedro said in surprise flying in the sky. Don't you know me? Eddie was surprised. But then she thought about it, the furry principality is a place that even newsbirds would not go to, so it seems normal that they don't know each other. My name is Edie and I'm a scientist. What do you want from us? It's not clear whether he is an enemy or a friend, Parod's movements are very alert. It just happened to happen. Edie smiled and said, I heard that you fur people have two special powers. One is to use the body to emit static electricity, which is quite powerful. The other is. Having said this, he looked back slightly and glanced at the moon hanging in the sky behind him. When the moon is full, you can transform into a moon lion. The three of them were surprised. Perode quickly pulled out the sword behind him, is that so, human traffickers? I heard from the elders of the tribe that humans often capture us fur tribes and sell them as slaves. Hearing this, Jabo and Pope Musi they also took a fighting stance together. Damn human traffickers! Don't underestimate the power of our Nox pirates, humans. Does he look like a human trafficker? Edie laughed and said, the average price of your fur tribe in the slave market is only 700,000 belly which is only 1% of that of female mermaids. Also, I'm not a human trafficker. What exactly do you want to do? Perode asked in a deep voice. He did not feel any hostility, but he still did not dare to relax. The blood factor of your family is very good, Edie thought for a while and then changed his mind. No, let me see your moon lion form first. Speaking of moon lion, he couldn't help but think of a crocodile rabbit fur tribe. By the way, your fur tribe's greeting, Kaluchu. If you say this, will you calm down? Not only did he not calm down, but he launched an attack. Static electricity appeared on his hands. The static electricity was so powerful that it was even visible to the naked eye. Jebo, Boko Moose. He shouted, as if breaking a cup as a sign and the three of them started to attack together. The next moment, the leopard, the lion, and the polar bear. The three fur tribes roared and attacked Edie at the same time. The jumping power of the three was extremely amazing. He jumped up from the deck, tens of meters high. Their cooperation was also extremely tacit. Jabot's bear paw slapped Edie's head. Pachma's fist hit his heart. And in the end, Pedro, Holding the knife in both hands, static electricity wrapped around the blade, and stabbed Edie's Adam's apple with one blow. Every move was a critical blow. Bang! After a dull sound that almost merged into one, the three people's attacks stopped at Edie's Adam's apple. Ten centimeters away. What? Perod's eyes widened and he didn't understand what happened at all. The attack is so weak that it makes the ultimate move look like a joke. Edie looked calm and stretched out a finger to point at Pedro's forehead. Dominating flash. Boom. A black flash condensed at the tip of his finger and flickered suddenly. Perod was hit by B.A. flash on the spot. He screamed and fell from a high altitude to the deck. Brother Pedro. Pachmas shouted angrily you bastard, you actually killed brother Pedro. To read exciting novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. When he yelled at Edie, he suddenly realized that the figure of the other party had disappeared in front of him. Jabot's pupils shrank suddenly, and he saw the pirate on the deck of the ship, a figure flashed, and the other party was already there. So fast. Jabot couldn't see the movement trajectory at all, and even if he could see it clearly, he wouldn't be able to stop it. 
the two of them fell towards the sea surface under the influence of the planet's gravity. On deck. Edie stands next to Parod's bloody corpse. I specially controlled the power of my moves for you, so that I can hurt you without killing you. This is very troublesome, so don't let down my good intentions. Stand up and use your Leo Moon. The corpse moved. Perod gritted his teeth and staggered to his feet. He looked at the full moon and shouted. You two, run away. As soon as he finished speaking, Edie heard a strong heartbeat. Boom boom boom. Perod's eyes turned red, the hair on his body turned white and swelled, and his nails became sharp. In the blink of an eye, an angry white leopard appeared in front of him. Edie looked surprised interesting. Why can moonlight stimulate you to transform? What's special about the wavelength of moonlight? The moon only reflects sunlight, why can't sunlight make you transform? It's very valuable for research. While he was talking, Parod, who transformed into a moon lion, has launched a violent attack. He used his sharp claws as weapons and used the violent wind claws at Edie. However, no matter how he attacked, his claws could not touch Edie's body. It's as if there is infinite space between the two of them. Damn it, what happened? Pedro remained rational in his rage. After the continuous attacks, he suddenly withdrew a distance. He stood on the bulwark of the ship and looked at the mysterious man in front of him in surprise. Not bad ability. After transformation, his speed and strength have been greatly improved and even injuries and pain have been suppressed. Well, this should be the body secreting a hormone that makes your brain temporarily forget the pain, rather than healing the injury. You fur tribe are truly a treasure, not much worse than the Lunaria tribe. Edie's face was full of approval. The blood factor of this race is unexpectedly excellent. They should collect blood as soon as possible. Who are you 4.1? What's the purpose? Pedro gritted his teeth and said. Don't be so angry, I just wanted to. Saying this, Edie's left hand grasped the handle of Lishuan's knife. The next moment, Pedro's pupils shrank suddenly and disappeared. The opponent's movement far exceeded his dynamic vision. Even after transforming into a moon lion, he still couldn't see clearly the opponent's movement trajectory. Seeing and hearing? From the first time he met the other party, he had always maintained the color of knowledge. However, the color of knowledge could not see the other party. Puff. Suddenly, his chest hurt, and a column of blood spurted out from his chest. When? Damn it, consciousness. Pedro was shaken and his consciousness gradually left. He exited the moon lion form and hit the deck. From beginning to end. He didn't see Edie's movement, nor did he see the moment he was attacked. Boom! Parod fell in a pool of blood. Beside him, Edie took out a blood collection silk scarf and gently wiped Lishuan's blade. Thank you, kind-hearted fur tribe, I will accept your blood factor. After collecting the blood of the fur tribe, Edie left. As for Pedro, he was merciful, had no grievances, and he did not kill anyone. The next day, early morning. New World, Palm Island. This is one of the strongholds of the Whitebeard Pirates. The island is shaped like a palm, hence its name. The Moby Dick pirate ship is docked on the shore, and next to the white whale ship, there is another pirate ship. The pirate flag hanging is a skull with three scars on its left eye. Under the skull are two crossed knives. The flag of the red-haired pirates. In midair, Edie spotted the red-haired boat at a glance. Although he has never seen red hair, the pirate flag of red hair is easy to identify. On the shore, a bonfire was lit. Red-haired shanks came to Whitebeard dragging a wine gourd that was bigger than others. Long time no see, Whitebeard. I brought the best wine from my hometown. Would you like to have a drink? Whitebeard sat on the wicker chair, looking at the red hair and finally stopped at the straw hat around the red hair's neck. Goo la la la. In the blink of an eye, the little devils on Roger's boat have grown so big. What about the red nose? Bucky? 
The red-haired man grinned and said rather nostalgically back in Rogtown, I invited him to join my pirate group, but he refused. You must be looking for treasure somewhere now. Whitebeard just asked casually, and then he saw a little girl hiding behind Hong Twenty, holding on to his trouser leg. The little girl was timid, with white hair on one side and red on the other. Is this your daughter? Her name is Yuda. The red-haired man touched his daughter's head and said with a smile Yuda, say hello. Yuda looked at the big guy Whitebeard in fear, and finally greeted him politely hello, I am Yuda, the daughter of Shanks. Really? You have to protect your family, red-haired kid. Ha ha ha, of course. The red-haired man laughed and saw Marco next to Whitebeard, isn't this Marco? Go and get the wine glass. Marco looked at Whitebeard. Seeing his father's approval, he immediately got a wine glass. It was a bit too conservative to say that the wine glass was a wine bowl with a mouth diameter of more than one meter. Soon, the two pirate groups started fighting. They all became one, and the banquet became lively. The red-haired man sat on the floor, drank a large bowl of wine in one gulp, and made a happy sound. Whitebeard, I have been in the New World for two years, and I have always heard a rumor. Kaido Big Mom, and you. The three of you spend a lot of money every year to sponsor that scientist in the hive. Goodong goodong goodong. Red-haired people drink from a big bowl, while white-bearded people drink directly from the altar. That's right, what do you want to do to inquire about such a thing? Incredible. The red-haired man was a little surprised. These are the three emperors of the New World, the three forces that stand at the top of pirates. It's said to be sponsorship money, but it's actually no different from protection money. Is that person in the hive so scary? The red-haired man couldn't help but ask even a man like you has to pay him. Whitebeard narrowed his eyes. At this time, a voice sounded, causing both of them to change their expressions. Do you want to sponsor me too? Red-haired Shanks. The red-haired man suddenly raised his head and saw a figure dressed in white appearing in mid-air. He showed an expression of disbelief. Being approached at such a distance, he had no reaction at all. No, even if it was now, the man in sight is also invisible in his domineering power. Are you that scientist? He said in a deep voice. Edie, Whitebeard was stunned. I didn't expect you to come to my territory. Not welcome. Eddie lowered his figure and landed next to the bonfire. He looked at the red hair, and then his eyes were attracted by the little girl next to the red hair. This girl must be Yuta, the world's number one singer in the future. Superhuman. Song fruit ability user. Goo la la la, it's really a rare visitor. Whitebeard grinned and said Marco. Go get me the best wine. I do not drink. Eddie refused the invitation and said to the red hair I am not here to find you white beard pirates, but him. I. The red haired man looked puzzled. He had no interaction with the other party. This was the first time they met. However, he is not yet the future face fruit capable user and does not dare to be too presumptuous in front of Edie. What do you want from me? You have great potential, Shanks. I am optimistic that you will become the fourth sea emperor in the future. Edie smiled why don't you sponsor my research institute in advance? Faced with such a request, Hong was speechless. He realized. The pirate emperor of the new world collects protection fees from others everywhere, and most of the islands are protected by one of the three emperors. And the person in front of him was even more outrageous directly charging the three emperors for protection. Because you are optimistic about him and think he will become the fourth emperor, so you come to collect his protection fee in advance? Ha 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 ha, the redhead couldn't help but laugh. No wonder the other three were called emperors, but this man was called emperor. Even the titles were different. It's really different. I can't afford the money. Our red-haired pirates are a poor pirate group. Yet. Yeah. Eddie shook her head and looked at Yuda again. This little girl seemed a little afraid of him and hid behind Shanks. 
This little girl will be abandoned by her adoptive father in three years. Think about it. It's quite pitiful. He lived alone for ten years on an island in ruins. He was only accompanied by a music teacher. Ten years later, he died again. He might as well snatch it away from the red-haired man to avoid suffering in the future. He it's not because he looks cute because he's young, he's not a Lolita. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Philo Novel Network. As if aware of Edie's gaze, Yuta became even more frightened. The red-haired face after sinking, he subconsciously grasped the handle of the knife at his waist. I'm sorry, Emperor, she is my daughter, and I will never forgive anyone who hurts my daughter. Edie raised his eyebrows with a playful look in his eyes. His anger suddenly turned into a chill. Whitebeard coughed, Edie, it's not good to fight on my territory. It's none of your business, I'm not looking for you, so shut up. Edie glanced at Whitebeard, and his domineering energy immediately locked onto the red-haired man. Boom! The red lightning burst out all over him, like a red snake swimming in the atmosphere, and suddenly enveloped the red-haired man. The red-haired man was shocked. Overlord color? No, it's different from the ordinary overlord color. It's as if the soul has received a strong impact, and an impulse to kneel on the ground arises. The red-haired man stood up suddenly, protecting his daughter Yuta behind him. Yuta, you go back to the ship first. As he said that, his eyes focused, and the same overlord color burst out, fighting against Edie's overlord color. The two overlord colors are like two expanding spheres, fighting for each other's living space. However, compared to Edie's domineering color, the red-haired domineering color is only a passive defense and is suppressed to death. Is it only to this extent? A flash of disappointment flashed in EDI's eyes. The energy level is about 90 billion, which is lower than Chen Ho. The strength of the earthly branch level clones depends mostly on the strength of the target body prototype when the blood is extracted. In other words, now we can clone an earthly branch by obtaining red hair's blood, which may be a little stronger than the current red hair, but that's about it. It seems that we have to help him and speed up the red hair. I think this is the end of 343, Edie Calm Tone. This is not how Ba Wang color is used, kneel down. Rumble. Like a bolt from the blue, the next moment, dark clouds appeared over Palm Island. The extremely thick dark clouds blocked the sun, and the sky became dark. At the same time, the red lightning around Edie became more and more manic, as thick as an arm, as if it had turned into an entity, it suddenly penetrated the red-haired overlord. There was an extremely dull bang, and the red-haired groaned. The next moment, it was as if his soul had been struck by red lightning. He plopped down and knelt down. What? The red-haired face was dull, and the world in front of him seemed to be spinning constantly, and a strong sense of dizziness invaded his brain. Shanks. Yuta suddenly became anxious. It was the first time she saw Shanks in such a mess, and he knelt down in front of the enemy just after seeing each other. What happened? Why did it become like this? Shanks wanted to stand up, but his body he seemed to be out of control. He was obviously similar to the opponent in terms of dominance, but why was he suppressed so easily? Edie walked over slowly, stood in front of the red-haired man, and spoke calmly. Your way of using Ba Wang color is too primitive, and you don't understand the true secret of Beiki at all. You are not allowed to bully Shanks. Yuta suddenly stopped in front of the red-haired man, opened his arms, and protected the old hen like a little hen. Yuta, go. The red-haired man said hurriedly. Edie looked at the little girl, and Yuta looked at him fearfully. Almost realizing that his daughter was in danger, the red-haired man took a deep breath, put his hands on the ground, and lowered his head. See the emperor. Please don't hurt my daughter. As for money, I will find a way. Is it about money? It's because you are too weak now. Edie was speechless. The red-haired one is too weak. Now blood is collected for cloning. 
The clone that will come out in two years will probably have about the same combat power as Shen Ho. Even if he is stronger than Shen Ho, his strength is limited and far from reaching the level of a general. Thinking of this, Edi immediately decided to help the other party speed up. You are too weak. You can't even protect your own daughter now. Edi's overbearing look directly stunned Yuda. This little girl is only six years old now, so naturally she can't bear his overbearing look. Her eyelashes trembled slightly, her body went limp, and she fainted on the spot. The kneeling red-haired girl suddenly raised her head. He saw his daughter being held in Edie's arms and already flying into the air. Yuda. The red-haired complexion changed drastically. Want your daughter? If you want it, come to the hive. Edie hugged little Yuda and declared calmly hate yourself for being weak, regret your powerlessness at this time, and become stronger. One day you will have the strength of a general and become the fourth sea emperor. Just crawled in front of me. Boss. Yuda. Shanks. At this time, the members of the red-haired pirates not far away finally came to red-haired. Seeing Yuda being captured by EDI, they were all shocked and angry. Put my daughter down. The red-haired man resisted the domineering color that Edi had applied to him, gritted his teeth and raised his legs to stand up. His domineering color grew at this moment. A red electric light was born, making a crackling sound. As expected, people still need to be a little stressed. Edie smiled, with the corners of her mouth raised slightly, but it's not enough. Boom! The red lightning as thick as a child's arm instantly broke through the red-haired overlord color. The red-haired man groaned and felt strong dizziness again. But this time he understood. Why did the two of them use Overlord Color with similar intensity? But the opponent's power was far greater than his. His previous Overlord Color was just big, like a shield with a huge defensive range, but extremely weak. But the opponent's Overlord Color was condensed into a sharp sword, his shield can be broken easily. This is the difference in proficiency in controlling the Overlord Color. At this moment, he has withstood such overlord color sword twice with his body, and he has vaguely mastered a trick. It seems that even monkeys can master some skills through observation. Eddie's face remained as usual. This is just a technique for practicing the difficult level. It is incomparable with BA flash and red flash, and is within the range that a monkey can understand. If you really want to talk about it, this kind of Ba Wang color control method, he still starts from the inspiration gained from the red hair. In the plot, the red hair can use his domineering color to intimidate the future Admiral Green Bull from hundreds of kilometers away. This kind of control power can be said to be the level of the ceiling. Of course, it is the ceiling of the monkey. Now it's just a matter of stimulating the other party in advance, so that the red hair can grow to a level that satisfies him as soon as possible. Call. The red-haired man below covered his forehead, resisting dizziness, and stared at Edie, let go. Before he could finish his words, suddenly, a dark slash struck from the sea. This slash was not an attack on him, but on Edie in the sky. Um. Edie raised his eyebrows. He immediately sensed an aura with a high energy level. A huge black slash was like a crescent moon, striking directly from the sea thousands of meters away. Edie held Yuda in his left hand and stretched out his right hand. Come out. Boom. The slash immediately stopped after touching his palm, and was pressed tightly by the fleshy palm, making it difficult to advance. No, to be precise, the two were not in direct contact, there was a one centimeter gap between them. But even this short one centimeter is like a natural chasm, insurmountable at all. Is it Hawkeye? It's Hawkeye Slash. He actually blocked it with his bare hands. Whether it was the red-haired pirates or the white-bearded pirates, they couldn't help but gasped and looked shocked. But the most surprised was Hawkeye himself who made this attack. He was thousands of meters away from the shore. On the sea outside, Hawkeye stood on his coffin boat, looking at the figure in midair with astonishment. His expression could not help but be in a trance. 
he struck with all his strength, could he be suppressed by someone's flesh palm? Then, he he saw a scene that made him completely silent. The black slash that was blocked by Edie's bare hands was shattered by a squeeze after his fingers contracted. The world's greatest swordsman slashing attack? Edie said with a smile a frog born at the bottom of a well can only see a small piece of sky at the mouth of the well when he raises his head. As he spoke, the broken sword energy that was crushed by him fell elsewhere. One of them tore the earth, and another split the mountain. The members of the red-haired pirate group were completely stunned. What kind of monster? To read exciting novels, go to Feel Novel Network. This kind of slash can be crushed with bare hands. Hawkeye bent his knees slightly, suddenly jumped onto the shore. He looked up at Edie and grinned. He is worthy of being the true overlord of the new world. It's a joke. The world's number one swordsman is just a compliment from some news media. He doesn't dare to claim to be the best in the world. Edie ignored the other party. Like the red-haired Shanks, the current Hawkeye also lacks a little fire and has not reached the peak of his own strength. Goodbye, you two. When you become the four emperors and the world's greatest swordsman, come to Honeycomb Island to see me. I took your daughter away. If you want to take it back, fight to the death and become stronger. Edie's figure slowly soared into the air, flying higher and higher. Suddenly, he remembered something, took out three injection needles, and threw them to Marco. This is an anti-aging agent I developed, which can delay aging and maintain youthfulness. This is for you. Goodbye, Lao Bai. It's just a trial work, and the side effects are unknown. Of course, Edie would not use it on his own people, so he simply used Whitebeard to test the medicine. This kind of thing is just a gadget to him, a byproduct of the original research on Substance P. After that, the person quickly flew away. The red-haired man was unable to stop it and could only watch his daughter being taken away. Hawkeye said nothing because he found that Edie also wore a knife on his waist. Is this hive master also a swordsman? Marco caught the three injection needles and looked at Whitebeard blankly. Dad, he said this is an anti-aging agent. Dad is now 59 years old and is really getting older. Moreover, due to the battles in his youth, there are also some diseases that come with aging. The gift from Mr. Edie was timely. Josie on the side shook his head and said how could you just inject Dad with such a messy thing? What if something goes wrong? Goo la la la. Are you afraid that I will die too soon and not be able to pay back the remaining 150 billion? Whitebeard laughed twice, then picked up the wine jar and drank heavily. The members of the red-haired pirate group looked at the captain one by one, and the atmosphere was extremely solemn. Shanks, Vice Captain Ben Beckman wanted to comfort him, but didn't know how to speak. Boss, what should I do? Chef Lachilla said in a panic Yuta has been taken away. The red-haired man kept looking in the direction where Edie was flying away, took a deep breath, turned to the Whitebeard and asked. Whitebeard, with my current strength, leading my men to the hive, is there any chance to get my daughter back? He doesn't know anything about the hive. He once followed Roger to that island, but now that the hive has changed owners for a long time, he doesn't know what the situation is there. Hearing this, Whitebeard was startled for a moment, narrowed his eyes and said. Give up, you'd better follow his wishes and become the pirate emperor before going. Your former captain, you should be very aware of Roger's strength. One of the twelve earthly branches under his command, Zishu is Roger's clone and possesses Roger's, good money, combat power during his lifetime. He has fought against Zi Shu, so he knows very well how strong Zi Shu is. The red-haired man was stunned. A clone of the captain? With the strength of the captain during his lifetime. This is only one of the twelve earthly branches, and the others are all what kind of monster? Chinryu knows it. According to this theory, Chinryu is Kaido's clone. The red-haired man felt powerless, and his crew members also fell into silence. What will happen to Yuta? He asked painfully. Don't worry, 
I've known that guy for five years. Your daughter will be fine. She may have good food and drinks, and she will be more stable than living with you. Whitebeard grinned. Marco also smiled maybe the emperor likes your daughter very much. When I went to deliver the sponsorship fee yesterday, I saw Kaido's daughter Jia in the research institute. Red hair. He panicked even more. His daughter, Yuda, is only six years old. The other side. Edie held little Yuda and flew towards Beehive Island. Glancing at the sleeping little girl in his arms, he couldn't help but shake his head. Your adoptive father will abandon you in three years. I will snatch you away to save you from suffering. Uncle, I am definitely not a lilicon. That afternoon, Edie returned to the Hive Research Institute. When you go out, where did you pick up the child? So cute when sleeping. Douto came up to him and saw Yuda in Edie's arms at a glance, his face full of surprise. She is the red-haired adopted daughter. You can take care of her from now on. Edie walked into the research institute and handed Yuda in her arms to Dautu. Dautu was a little confused. He hugged Yuda for a while and then said, You snatched my daughter back. I'm saving her. Edie felt helpless, good people are always misunderstood. If he doesn't bring Yuda back, three years later, the red-haired girl will take this little girl to Elijah, and then as expected, the event of summoning the ancient demon king will occur. As for the ending, Yuta was cruelly abandoned and lived alone in the ruined music city for ten years. After turning into a black man, he tried to create a new world with the fruit of songs. In the end, it ended miserably and he died sadly. Save her. Douta was a little confused. This little girl looked very healthy. But she didn't ask any more questions. She still trusted Edie very much. What about Hancock? After being stimulated, she ran away to practice. Kaido's daughter awakened her overlord color, and she wanted to master it as soon as possible. Peach Rabbit said with a smile. In the plot, when and how Boya Hancock awakened to his overlord color, Edie did not know. He only knew that without his intervention, Hancock, now sixteen years old, he should have just escaped from the Holy Land Marigio and returned to the Island of Girls. Two years later, he inherited the position of Emperor of the Kingdom of Girls. He received a bounty of 80 million in just one expedition, and was subsequently recruited by the world government to become the seventh king. One of the martial arts. This is what would have happened in the original timeline. Speaking of which, did a fishman adventurer named Fisher Tiger climb onto the Red Earth continent with his bare hands this year? Freed the slaves in the Holy Land. Edie couldn't help asking. Yes, this happened three months ago, and it caused a 207 sensation. Peach Rabbit nodded, very surprised that Edie actually knew about this. What to do with this, sweet fruit? Edie thought with a headache. The Pirate Empress. Boya Hancock, has the most beautiful appearance in the world. She she is the person with the superhuman sweet fruit ability. This fruit was forced to eat during a sideshow when she was a slave. Hancock, without the sweet fruit, always felt that something was missing. And this this fruit is very domineering, and its abilities can be simply divided into two types, the first one is one who is charmed by Hancock's beauty and develops an evil heart, and will be petrified. The second one is direct contact, such as being raped by Hancock. Cook was kicked directly, and even if she was not charmed, she would still be petrified. The future Yonko Blackbeard ran to rob her of her abilities, and several of his subordinates were killed on the spot. I have to find a way to get this fruit. No, this fruit may have been fed to a female slave by the Celestial Dragon. It's okay to get the blood of the ability user but it's even better to make it into an ability ring, since it has no weaknesses. Edie thought in her heart. Hancock was like a child bride to him. The two met in 1503 and lived together for five years. He watched this girl grow up, and her status in his heart was the same as the others. People are different. But the problem now is, how to find this fruit, or in other words, 
how to find the person with the ability to eat this fruit. I'm afraid even Morgans doesn't have any information about this matter. Looks like we need to set up an intelligence system. Oh, this little problem doesn't bother me. Eddie thought for a moment and immediately thought of a good idea. Thinking of this, he immediately ordered Tutu, go and let Chen. Chen Long and Chaonia were sent by him to hunt the Neptune species, but they haven't returned yet. So he changed his mind go and ask Viang to buy all types of phone bugs on the market and send them to the laboratory as soon as possible. How much do you need? Ten of each kind. Soon after, the underground laboratory. Edie extracted the lineage factors of various telephone bugs and analyzed them one by one. The phone bug is a common communication tool in the pirate world. Its function is similar to the phone in the previous life. But in fact, the phone bug is a natural creature, a bug. People capture insects that live in natural forests and install communication devices on them, which then become a simple telephone. How they work is also simple. This little creature can transform the pictures, images, sounds it sees, and the sounds it hears into thought waves that its kind can understand. After receiving the thought waves, the same kind of people will make a purr, purr sound. After someone turns on the receiver, the phone bug will decrypt the thought waves and imitate the language that humans can understand. This is a racial talent. Neon wave is actually a kind of electromagnetic wave. After a little research, Edie quickly figured out the secret of the phone bug. To be honest, it's not difficult at all. It's a middle school student level topic. And because it is an electromagnetic wave, it is actually easy to be monitored. Edie can rub out a phone bug in minutes. Station monitoring device. But it is not necessary. Because phone bugs can be roughly divided into three categories, small phone bugs, which are small and easy to carry, but the radio waves they emit are very weak, and communication is impossible from an island. Phone bugs are large and inconvenient portable, but the radio waves are very strong. If you install an imaging device, you can turn it into a video phone bug, if you connect a camera device, you can turn it into a photo phone bug, and if you have a fax device, you can even send the photos you took to another phone. A fax phone bug that accepts faxes. It can realize various functions. In addition to these two, there is also a black phone bug. It is smaller than the small phone bug, about the size of a child's hand, and the most popular is the black phone bug. They like to eavesdrop on the radio waves of their companions. Therefore, this black phone bug was transformed into a phone bug by the world government. However, they are very few in number and are contraband of the world government. They cannot be purchased in regular phone bug stores. No matter which one it is, the flaws are too big. What I need is a phone bug that is only the size of a mosquito and has strong radio waves that can transmit images and sounds. To read exciting novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. There is no such phone bug in the world, so create your own. Edie mastered, seeped, the blood factor theory and was the creator in a sense. Immediately, he asked Dizzy to capture some mosquitoes, extract the mosquitoes' blood factor, and then use cloning technology to combine the phone bug's blood factor with the fusion, two days later. Cloning failed. The mosquito's blood factor is too weak. If the phone bug's blood factor is compared to a tree, the mosquito is just a piece of grass. Due to the limitations of Edie's current technology, it cannot be done. Let's change someone else. In desperation, Edie had to settle for the next best thing and become a fly. The flies on Beehive Island are a little bigger than the mosquitoes, but they are acceptable. Three more days passed. Cloning failed again. The fly's bloodline factor couldn't bear it and collapsed, melting into a puddle of black matter in the petri dish. I don't believe it, a bigger creature. Edie ordered the earthly branches again. This time, the earthly branches captured the bees from Beehive Island. The individual bees were a little larger than flies. After selecting a few that were small in size but tenacious, Edie began the cloning experiment again. Finally, 
half a month later. In the laboratory, Edie looked at the several new bees flapping their wings in the petri dish and showed a satisfied smile. It worked, and it really wasn't a problem for me. Why should a phone bug be a phone bug? Call it telephone bee, forget it, it doesn't sound good, let's call it bee detective. The bee-shaped detection bug, referred to as the bee detection bug, or the bee detection bug. It has most of the talents of the telephone bug, and can transmit the pictures it sees, the sounds it hears, etc. in the form of electromagnetic waves. And because they are not the same species biology, this kind of radio waves cannot be decrypted by telephone bugs. In other words, black phone bugs cannot eavesdrop on the radio waves of bee detectives. There is another problem, a queen bee is needed to receive the radio waves from these bee detectors. This is quite easy to handle. Next, EDI did two more things. First, mass produce bee scouts. Because they are small, they save resources compared to human cloning and consume very little time. Second, create a bee scout. Finally, the radio waves used to receive bee scouts can also be called the queen bee monitoring system. A week passed like this. Edie finally achieved his original goal. 100,000 bee scouts were cloned by him in just one week, and it only consumed about 1 billion belly, which was so cheap. At the same time, he renovated the monitoring room of the underground laboratory and connected the first-generation queen bee monitoring system. This thing is much smarter than the original invention, copying. Attack, AK-47 automatic rifle is simple. After all, the latter also requires the steel smelting industry. The former is Edie's area of expertise, blood factor cloning. What a genius I am! Edie was satisfied, carrying a cage of bees, and finally walked out of the underground laboratory after more than twenty days. Lord Heavenly Father! At the entrance, Shen Ho immediately knelt down on one knee. Just in time, you send this to the holy land of Marijoa, where there are about one thousand bees. Pay attention to concealment and it is best to act at night. EDI handed the bee detection cage to Shen Ho, patted his shoulder, and said with a smile Shen Ho, this mission is very dangerous, but I believe you can do it. With 1000 bees, you only need to survive 1%. This thing is not that hidden. You can see it with your naked eyes, and you can hear the sound of wings flapping with your ears. If you want to clean it up, just a thousand it can be cleaned up easily. But, no one would have thought that this thing is actually surveillance. Created by his creator, it is a brand new life that has never appeared in this world. The surveillance range is very large, the radio wave intensity is very high and cannot be eavesdropped by black phone bugs. It has many advantages. If we want to talk about disadvantages, it is probably only its lifespan. He tried his best but the lifespan of this kind of bee spy is only six months. Fortunately, the cost is cheap, and you can just replenish it after it dies. Yes. Shen Ho carried the bee detection cage and went to carry out the order without hesitation. Danger? Even if he died on the spot, he would faithfully complete the task. EDI stood outside the door of the research institute and watched Shen Ho fly away. Bee detective, Queen Bee. In addition to these two, there is currently a bee soldier in the Hive Research Institute. It is a clone of Rob Lucky. There are 100 units in total. Counting time, it is about to enter the mature stage. After working in the laboratory for more than 20 days, I finally finished the bee detection and queen monitoring system. Next, as long as Shen Ho delivers the 1000 bees to the Holy Land, he can sit at home and monitor Marie Joa's situation in real time. Maybe you can even see the meeting of the five old stars. Of course, the primary purpose is to obtain sweet fruits. To do this, we need to understand a few things first. Has this fruit been eaten? If not, where should the fruit be stored? If eaten, to whom was it fed? Is it a slave? If he was a slave, did he take advantage of the chaos and escape during Fisher Tiger's operation to cause havoc in the Holy Land three months ago? 
If he escapes, it will be a little troublesome to find him. Edie is not in a hurry. With the Queen Bee monitoring system, if she looks for it carefully, she will find it sooner or later. Other islands can also be monitored. This time, 100,000 bees were cloned. They only have a lifespan of six months. If we don't use them now, they will all die in six months. Chen Long Viang As soon as Edie thought about it, Overlord's color was like a red electric light, and he quickly captured Chen Long's breath and passed his voice over. Come and see me. The two Wei Yangs who were collecting indulgences at Rocky Port heard Heavenly Father's order and immediately spread their wings and flew to the Institute. A minute later, the two came to the gate of the Institute and knelt down on one knee. Heavenly Father, what is your command? There are 99 bee spy cages in the cloning laboratory on the second underground floor. You two go and deliver them too. Having said this, Edie pondered for a moment and took out a paper and pen from his pocket. East China Sea, Kingdom of Goa, Windmill Village Kakosia Village. North Sea, the Kingdom of Germa, the White Town of Fruvans, the port city of Spadamars in a certain country, Petrol Island Mignan Island Drubek Island. South China Sea, Kingdom of Sorbet. West Sea, slightly. Sea of Paradise, Twin Capes, Whiskey Peak, Ancient Island Garden, Magnetic Drum Kingdom Kingdom of Alabasta, Gaia Island, Long Ring Island, Capital of the Seven Waters, Judiciary Island, Shampoo Islands, Daughter Island, Deep Sea Prison Marine Headquarters Marine Ford, Kamabaka Kingdom. New World Sea Areas, Kingdom of Dress Rosa, 10,000 Kingdoms, Wayno Country, Ghost Island, Palm Island, Future Island Egghead, Elba Kingdom of Husband Giants. With his amazing memory, Edie quickly divided the target into six sea areas and wrote down some key locations. You take the bee detection cages and deliver them to these locations respectively. Edie I handed a page full of writing to Chen Long. Especially in the few places I highlighted, after delivery, you need to confirm the survival of the bees. And, forget it, there is no need to go to Future Island. Eddie thought for a while and crossed out Egghead, the Future Island. This place is not far from Beehive Island and is the scientific research base of Vegapunk. That island has a strong defense system and its own bee reconnaissance system. In the past, it didn't matter if you died. Once you were captured alive, maybe the world government would study something. Just do what it says on paper. Distribute excess bee cages to different places as much as possible. Yes. Chen Long got the note and carefully wrote down the location. Especially the places marked by Heavenly Father, there must be no mistakes. After writing them down thoroughly, the two earthly branches followed the order and went to the experiment on the second underground floor. Room, took the remaining 99B detection cages with him, and began a journey around the world. In this way, almost the whole world can be monitored, Edie watched the two of them leave. Monitoring the whole world is of course an exaggeration, but some important locations will have his bee surveillance activities in the future. It's just that every six months, it needs to be replenished by the earthly branches. Mainly the three islands in the North Sea, there is absolutely no room for error. Petrol Island, Mignan Island, Rubeck Island. These three islands are the most important targets. There are only a few days until 1508, and then in 1509, one year later, the fruits of the operation will briefly appear on these three islands in the North Sea. He wants to intercept this fruit. If it is not intercepted and eaten by someone, blood will be collected as soon as possible. This concerns his eternal life. Nothing is as important as eternal life. Call. After everything was arranged, Edie stretched out comfortably. After being busy for more than twenty days, I finally have some free time. I almost forgot about Whitebeard, the cultivation of grain seeds. Edie saw a large number of bodies piled up on the shore. One hundred sea kings have been hunted by Chen Long and Ugly Ox, and now they are all piled up on the coast near Rocky Port. Among these sea kings, 
the smallest one is more than 100 meters long, and the largest one even reaches 400 meters. Forget it, let's rest for two days. Edie released her knowledge and quickly found Hancock's aura. The other side. Beehive Island, the northern coast of the Institute. Hancock kicked a huge rock that was several times taller than her. Wow, that's amazing, Onisama. Bang. 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 The two younger sisters, Boya Marigorod and Boya Sunda Sonia, immediately clapped. Yamato on the side also followed suit and clapped and congratulated that's awesome, Hancock. Your armed color domineering skills are much better than mine. Hancock put his hands on his hips, flipped up his hair, and said softly as long as I become serious, my overlord will be awakened immediately. Yamato, you can't be proud for long. But you said the same thing more than half a month ago. Yamato exposed his best friend's lie as if he was dumbfounded, Ba Wang color is actually very simple, like this, and then like this, I learned it. What she was gesturing about, probably only she could understand. A cross appeared on Hancock's smooth and jade-like forehead, he pointed at Yamato with his slender finger, and said angrily. I'm going to kick off the two horns on your head today. Ah? Do you want to spar with me? Yamato is eager to give it a try. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Fila Novel Network. Forget it, Sister Sama, please spare her once, don't be like this stupid idiot. The two sisters immediately grabbed Hancock, with wry smiles on their faces. Not far away, on a big tree in the forest. Haizu was hidden among the thick leaves, leaning against the branches, breathing sleepily. Hancock as Lord Heavenly Mother, of course has someone to protect him when he goes out. But Hancock and Miss Yamato have such farce happening every day, and she is almost tired of watching it. Seeking flowers. Suddenly. Hai Zhu was shocked and immediately jumped out of the tree. He jumped up and knelt down on one knee. Lord Heavenly Father. Thank you for your hard work, go and have a rest. Yes. Haizu moved and immediately disappeared into the woods. Edie stepped out and stepped on a dead branch, making a clicking sound. The girls who were messing around immediately noticed his arrival. Hancock was originally angry. His expression instantly became as tender as water, as well behaved as a rabbit. Lord Edie. Like a baby swallow returning to its nest, Hancock threw himself into Edie's arms and began to complain this stupid guy bullied me again. Edie kept a faint smile. She could only keep smiling at the bad relationship between Hancock and Yamato. Otherwise, what else could it be like? The two girls had been quarreling since they were young. Even after seeing each other for several years, they were still the same. Uncle Edie. Yamato ran over happily but unfortunately his arms were occupied by Hancock, Hancock can't learn the domineering look, I have worked hard to teach her. I don't need you to teach me, Hancock snorted everyone knows how to teach the earthly branches, even Hai Zhu can teach me better than you. It's you who are too stupid. Ah? I have to remove your horns today. Those are not horns. Seeing that there was going to be a quarrel again, Edie sighed and had to say can't you just get along well. Yes. Hancock changed his face in a second and nodded obediently. We get along great, Uncle Edie. Yamato didn't understand the situation at all, but tilted his head to express confusion. Come with me and I'll take you to the lab. Edie took Hancock's hand and took the girls back to the research institute. As they walked, she said the awakening of Overlord's color requires an opportunity, and I haven't studied it clearly yet. But if I help you increase your domineering power to its current limit, it might increase the probability of awakening. Yet, yeah, yet, yeah, I listened to Master Edie. Hancock smiled broadly and felt happy as Edie held his hand. I want it too, I want it too. Yamato blinked and took the initiative to hold Edie's other hand. Edie. What do you want? Do you want to hold hands, or do you want to increase your dominance? 
the two sisters following behind looked at each other and saw helplessness in each other's eyes. When will Onisama and Yamato-san stop quarreling? Even holding hands has to be fought for. Soon after, Edie took the two of them to the second underground floor, the special cloning laboratory. Three tall cloning warehouses stood in front of everyone, and Yamato made a sound of exclamation. So big. What is this for? Used to help you improve your domineering power. Edie smiled gently and explained to the two of them. Regardless of whether the two girls understood it or not, he immediately ordered Hancock, take off your clothes. The words just fell. Hancock was still out of the situation, and Yamato had already taken off his clothes. Edie. No, why are you moving so fast? Yamato put his hands on his hips and had no shame at all. After all, Uncle Edie was the only man here. She was eager to try and asked excitedly. And then, Uncle Edie and. There is no shame that ordinary women have. Edie was a little surprised by the female body displayed by Yamato, who was stripped clean like lightning. Is this the shape a 13-year-old girl should have? Before, she was wearing a close-fitting kimono, but no one expected the proud figure hidden under the kimono. Hancock's beautiful eyes widened, he looked at Yamato, then looked down at himself. The same thing happened when I lowered my head and couldn't see my toes, but for some reason, a sense of frustration was born in my heart. Damn it, I lost, what did this smelly white-haired guy eat to grow up? He is obviously three years younger than me. Hancock was so angry that he quickly took off his black chong sam, held his head high, and secretly competed with Yamato. A second astonishing piece of art unfolds before Edie's eyes. Compared to Yamato who has no shame, Hancock is a little shy, with a faint blush on his face. Lord Edie, her voice was a little shy. Edie nodded and pointed to the special cloning warehouses number one and two. Go in. Will it be seen by others, so shy? Hancock blushed close your eyes and open your fingers. She was just shy and had no resistance to being seen by Master Edie but she was not willing at all to be seen by others. Edie laughed and said, Don't worry, I will protect your privacy. Of course I won't let anyone see it, not even the maid. Hancock's two sisters are fine. Yes. Han 440 Cook felt relieved and walked into the number one special cloning warehouse first. In fact, she didn't understand what to do at all and just followed the instructions. Yamato also walked into the number two special cloning warehouse Kang, who didn't care about her nakedness at all, asked again. And then, what's next, Uncle Edie? The filling fluid will be injected later, you will feel very comfortable, then take a nap, and when you wake up, your dominance will be improved. Eddie explained while operating in front of the cloning cabin. Soon, the hatch cover slowly closed. Starting from the solace of the two people's feet, translucent filling fluid began to pour in, gradually filling the two cloning cabins. In the cabin as expected, the two girls inside felt the warmth, as if they had returned to their mother's arms. They closed their eyes and gradually fell into a deep sleep. Sonia, Mary. Edie turned around and told the two sisters take their clothes and wash them. Yes, Lord Edie. The two sisters picked up the dirty clothes on the floor and turned around to leave the cloning laboratory. As soon as the two left, Edie continued to admire the figures of the two girls. One was 16 years old and the other was 13 years old, but they completely surpassed the adult women. He couldn't help but think of Tianyu, who was reluctant to take off his clothes. In comparison, Hancock and Yamato completely trusted him. The nutrition is very good. Eddie shook his head, left here, and turned to the monitoring room next door, paying attention to the vital signs of the two women. Everything was normal. In order to protect the privacy of the two, he set all the surveillance systems that directly captured the footage to the highest permissions except for him, whoever comes here will only see a bunch of tables and data. I don't know what their upper limit is, so let's take a gentle approach first. Unlike Edie himself, 
he can use the soul soul fruit to absorb a large number of ghost particles in a short period of time. Hancock and Yamato can only absorb them naturally. In order not to irritate their souls too much, the particle concentration is also set it is a lower level. It is expected to last for a month. After doing this, Edie continued to appreciate the flawless, delicate, and charming scenery in the picture. Only he can appreciate such beautiful scenery. A few days later. The time came to January 1508. Grand Line, Daughter Island. This is an island located in the windless zone. It is the country where the female fighting nation Nine Snakes live. As the name suggests, this is an island inhabited only by women. Sometimes the Icelanders would go out to sea and come back pregnant with children, but only girls would be born. They have been trained as warriors since childhood, carrying all the family income and labor on their shoulders. Among them, the outstanding children will be selected into the ranks of soldiers who protect the country. The more outstanding women will join the Nine Snakes pirates led by the Emperor of the Daughter Kingdom. On this day, something happened that shocked the whole country. Nine Snake City, Imperial Palace The current emperor of the daughter country and the captain of the Nine Snakes Pirates, a woman in her thirties, was lying weakly on the bed. Her breathing was weak and she had a strange, sickly blush on her face. The medical staff at the bedside looked panicked. Yes, it's lovesickness. It's serious enough to endanger lives. It's too late. At this point, it's too late. His Majesty the Emperor will die. Panic spread, and the women around him were suddenly at a loss. Lovesickness is a wonderful disease unique to the daughter country. Because you fall in love with a man and can't see him again, longing for him for a long time becomes a disease. When it finally breaks out, the sick person will almost certainly die. Don't panic. At this time, a short old woman with a snake cane came in. Japo the emperor's ministers were surprised. Grandma Zi frowned and came to the bedside, looked at the weak woman on the bed, and sighed. How do you feel? Damn, I can't breathe. It's really a cursed virus, Grandma Zi said with a headache. I also had such a disease when I was young, that's why I went to see. The emperor's eyes were dim, he was covering his chest, and his breathing was getting faster and faster. I'm going to die. After my death, the next captain of Kuja must be elected as soon as possible. This country is short of material resources, and the people will not be able to survive without the Kuja pirates going out to plunder. We have come to this point, and we are still concerned about national issues. My mother-in-law thought helplessly, if she could be selfish, abandon the country and the Kuji pirates, and find her lover, she would not die. But now it is too late the virus it's serious enough to take the emperor's life soon. Is there a successor candidate? Mother-in-law asked. Hancock, the emperor opened his mouth and said insistently five years ago, the three Boya sisters were kidnapped by human traffickers. I failed to save them. I'm sorry for them. Mother-in-law yet, yeah, is this why you came to me before you died? Those three little girls should be on Beehive Island now. I know. That man's earthly branch, Chen Long, came here once before, and he asked me to pick him up myself. At that time, I didn't have the guts to do it. I didn't know if it was a threat or a sincere notice. The emperor's voice became weaker and weaker. She grabbed her mother-in-law's withered hand and begged she is a child with the qualifications of a king. She is now seventeen years old. She is the most suitable person to be the next emperor. The twelve-year-old Hancock was taken aboard the Nine Snakes pirate's ship by her. He is the most outstanding Nine Snakes warrior of this generation. The Emperor has long had the idea of nurturing his successor. Most of the Emperors in the past were short-lived. It is an unwritten rule to train his successor early. The captain of the Nine Snakes pirates can only be the most powerful woman in the country. Faced with the Emperor's request before his death, mother-in-law yet couldn't refuse at all. Beehive Island, I really don't want to go to that place. A lot of things happened on that island when I was young, some not so good memories. 
Grandma Zee sighed and said, I know, I will go. Thanks, to read Bao's Huang novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. The Emperor smiled and slowly closed his eyes. She also let go of Grandma Yi's hand and hung it down weakly. Eyes never opened again. His Majesty. The surrounding ministers burst into tears. Soon after, an obituary spread throughout the country. The captain of the Nine Snakes Pirates and the Emperor of the Daughter Country passed away today. At the same time, at the port, Grandma Zee boarded the ship of the Nine Snakes Pirates and left the country. As the former Emperor of the Daughter Kingdom and a member of the original Rocks Pirates, she once abandoned the country, but today, Granny Ye has to take action for the future of the country. Beehive Island, underground of the Research Institute. Monitoring Room Hancock is in good shape with Yamato. Edie was monitoring the vital signs of the two women while testing the Queen Bee monitoring system. At this time, dozens of large screens in the control room were showing scenes from all over the world. On the largest screen in the center is the Holy Land Marie Joya. Test it first, remote command control. Edie entered a command. The command was transmitted to Mary Joa in the form of radio waves through the Queen Bee system and was detected by several of the bees. Then, these bee scouts followed the instructions and flapped their wings to fly to their destination. Very good, remote control is no problem, just a little delay. This is not a delay in the radio wave. The delay comes from the bee receiving the order. It is the delay that occurs when the individual organism understands the order and starts to execute it. The somatosensory feeling is equivalent to experiencing more than a hundred pings while playing League of Legends. Um? This is... Suddenly, Edie's eyes turned and looked at a screen on the left. Celestial Dragons A celestial dragon appeared on the screen, with unique clothes and styles, and Edie recognized it at a glance. He called up the source of the radio waves, and the address showed that it was the East China Sea. It was not the Kingdom of Goa in the East China Sea. The country in the picture seemed to be experiencing war you can hear many explosions and gunshots. It is a place in the middle of a war. Halifax Saint, please withdraw to the ship quickly, this country is being attacked by the Revolutionary Army. The Revolutionary Army launched a rebellion here, for your safety. The leader is the commander of the Eastern Army. Edie saw in the picture that a naval general was persuading the celestial dragons to evacuate. He ordered one of the bees to fly to a higher place, and then saw a dozen warships on the sea. The protection of the celestial dragons when traveling was very strong. Like others, this can all be used to destroy the country. Edie cursed in his heart. The Revolutionary Army? Unlike the pirates, the purpose of the Revolutionary Army is to overthrow the world government and create a new world. The so-called Eastern Army is probably executed in the East China Sea. An Army on a Mission 5.8 The commander of the Eastern Army, was a little impressed. Edie frowned and thought for a while, it seems to be a woman named Ginny, a member of the future extremely evil generation, the mother of Joe Ali Pone. This woman seems to have been caught and forcibly married by the Tian Long people. She was played with for two years and gave birth to Bonnie. The Revolutionary Army did not respond to this and did not take any action. It was also because of this incident that Bartholomew Bear was later he was nicknamed the Cuckold Bear. The leader of the Revolutionary Army, Monkey D. Durag, was also called the King of Sweat. Ridiculous. Edie smiled. In the picture, the Draco named Khalifas is very angry. Evacuate? What a joke! This country is a franchising country. During my visit, the Revolutionary Army actually launched a rebellion. Everyone in this country deserves to die, especially the Revolutionary Army. Halifaz not only did not evacuate, but also issued an order to annihilate the Revolutionary Army. Facing the order of the Tian Long people, the Navy had no choice but to protect it while ordering its troops to participate in the war. It seemed that Ginny could not escape the clutches of the Draco. Edie thought for a while, then took out the phone and dialed a number. After a while, 
the radio wave was connected and he issued an order. Go back to the country where you just delivered the Bee Scout cage and capture the celestial dragons there. By the way, we also captured a woman named Ginny. She is the commander of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army. East China Sea, a country in war. The roar gradually subsided, and the Revolutionary Army captured the King's Castle. Outside the castle, the Revolutionary Army soldiers were chatting and laughing while they were resting. Finally solved it, and achieved good results this time. But it's not enough. Wherever there is a sense of resistance, our Revolutionary Army will help the powerless people in the form of mercenaries. Earn rewards and funds while expanding the flames of revolution. Amidst the laughter of the soldiers, Ginny held a stick of bone meat in her mouth, sat heroically on a box of ammunition, and carefully wiped the firearm. Sister Ginny, you seem very happy. A subordinate wearing a high hat laughed. Ah, is it so obvious? Ginny was startled for a moment, her smiling eyes narrowed into slits because tomorrow is the day to rendezvous with Xiang Zhe's troops, of course I am happy. I really envy the commander of the Bear Army to be liked by the popular goddess. Ah? When did I become your popular goddess? It's really disgusting, a bunch of brats. Mouth is so poisonous. While chatting and laughing, suddenly, a soldier from the Revolutionary Army rushed over. No good, Sister Ginny. The Navy has landed from the southern coast and is now heading towards, boom. A gunshot rang out, and the bullet hit the soldier from behind. He lowered his head and stared blankly at the blood flowing out of his chest. Falling to the ground with a thud. Mana. Ginny's expression changed slightly. The next moment, naval soldiers appeared from all directions, in large numbers, forming a siege network unconsciously. Then, a celestial dragon walked out surrounded by many bodyguards. Are you Ginny, captain of the Eastern Army? Saint Khalifa narrowed his eyes and grinned isn't this a great beauty? She turned out to be the commander of the Revolutionary Army. I have decided to let you be my eighth wife. Get her. 21 The Marines carried out the order faithfully. Ginny looked ugly. How could there be a Draco here? Without any time to think about it, she quickly hid behind the box and gave the order to her subordinates. Things have changed. Fight out with me. Don't touch the Tian Long people. If you don't touch him, he will involve a lot of troops to protect himself. And once the Tian Long people are injured, things will become more difficult. Our goal is to escape. Although I also wanted to hijack the Tian Long people, such thoughts just turned around in my mind and disappeared. After a few brief orders, the two sides launched a fierce battle. In less than an hour, the revolutionary army was almost completely wiped out, with only a few a small number of soldiers escaped. Ginny was pointed at the head with a gun by two sailors and forced to kneel in front of the Draco. Looking at the woman he liked in front of him, Saint Halifax was very satisfied. He stood in front of Ginny and said condescendingly, If you lick my shoes now, the position of the Eighth Lady is still yours. Ah? Who will lick your shoes? Ginny dismissed it, what's the Eighth Lady? The Draco people attach great importance to the purity of blood. The so-called XX person is just a plaything. Bitch. Halifax was furious, and he raised his foot to kick Ginny hard. At this moment, a black shadow fell from the sky. With a thud, it landed in front of Ginny, and at the same time, he grabbed Halifax with one hand. St. Khalifa was startled. The navy reacted immediately, and a colonel shouted protect the Draco. Boom. A wave of dominance suddenly erupted. In an instant, a large number of soldiers with guns, including the navy captain, fainted. The Draco Halifax saint was also unbearable, rolling his eyes and falling to the ground. Who are you? Ginny stared blankly at the magic weapon descending from the sky. Could it be that Mr. Long knew that I was in danger, so he sent someone here? Chen Long turned around, holding the celestial dragon's leg with one hand, and looked at Ginny with cold eyes. Father's command, 
follow me, woman. Heavenly Father? Ginny was startled, and then thought of someone. The intelligence of their revolutionary army was not a decoration. It was impossible not to know about the big shot in the New World, the Lord of the Hive, the great scientist Edie, and the people under his command. You are an earthly branch. Jinny's eyes widened Chen Long. Kaido's face. Earthly branch Chen Long. Chen Long was not interested in talking nonsense to Jinny. He directly grabbed the opponent's arm, fluttered his wings, and flew up. He came as fast as he left, from the time he appeared to when he left, before and after in less than ten seconds. By the time the navy elsewhere reacted, both the Draco and Ginny had already been taken away by him. No, not good. The Tianlong people were captured. It is one of the twelve earthly branches, Chen Long. The panicked navy quickly reported the news to its superiors, and then spread it to the ears of the navy headquarters and the world government. A few days later, Beehive Island, between the right eyes. Chen Long brought Ginny and Halifaz, the Draconian, in together. Kneel down. Chen Long kicked the Tian Long man's knee and forced him to kneel down. It was just like how Saint Halifax forced Ginny to kneel down. It hurts. Halifaz screamed in pain, fell to his knees, and said angrily Do you know who I am? Pa! Chen Long slapped him so hard that Khalifa's lost a few of his teeth. He said coldly No noise is allowed in front of Heavenly Father. Saint Halifax was stunned. This was the first time he had been slapped in the face. Now his mind was a little confused. The pain and humiliation made him kneel on the spot. Ginny on the side was trembling, and everyone in Tianlong was stunned. How much better could she get with this treatment? Seeing Chen Long looking at her, Ginny felt very conscious and knelt down on the spot, crawling in front of Edie. Heavenly Father, people have been brought. Chen Long knelt down on one knee and officially returned to life. Thanks for your hard work. Eddie nodded, ignored Ginny, and asked the Draco. Name. The Tian Long people were dumbfounded and didn't speak. They were still in the state of being slapped in shock. Edie frowned. When Chen Long saw that his heavenly father was displeased, he immediately slapped him again to wake up this idiot who didn't know etiquette. Halifax seemed to have noticed what Chen Long meant and trembled all over. I'm Isaac Khalifas. Snapped. Chen Long's slap arrived late but arrived. Khalifas was angry. In anger, he covered the slapped cheek and protested with tears in his eyes didn't I answer. Slow. Chen Long's eyes were cold. Halifax was trembling all over, half out of fear and the other half out of grievance. Doesn't it make sense, why is it so slow? Even if it's really a little slow, that's why I was scared. If you want to read exciting novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. Ginny on the side was completely dumbfounded. As expected of the overlord of the New World, the celestial dragons were really no different from dogs in front of this man. Edie had a gentle smile on her face, then asked. Halifax, you Dracos have a lot of devil fruits. You want a devil fruit? Halifaz's eyes lit up, and he immediately said let me go, and I will give you five devil fruits. Pa! As soon as he finished speaking, Chen Long slapped him again and knocked him away. Why? Halifaz covered his face and roared in pain. Interrupt Heavenly Father and die. Chen Long narrowed his eyes. Too arrogant. Bastards. I'm not as arrogant as you. Saint Halifax was so angry that he was shaking all over, but he didn't dare to have an attack. Although he was a celestial dragon, he still belonged to celestial dragon. People with better brains at least have a clear understanding of their current situation. You, please say, Khalifa's forced an ugly smile. Sweet fruit, do you know this fruit? Eddie is too lazy to talk nonsense to him. He spent a lot of time to catch a Tian Long man. Of course he must make good use of it. Hearing this, Khalifa seemed to see hope of salvation and nodded quickly. Yes, yes. 
I have an impression of this fruit because its shape is very special. It is a rare twin fruit. Twin fruits. Eddie raised her eyebrows in surprise. The shape of the sweet fruit is indeed very unique. Under a fruit branch, there are two heart-shaped fruits connected. One is pink and the other is dark purple. Its pattern is also different from ordinary devil fruits. There are hearts on the peel, with spiral stripes in the center. Khalifas hurriedly explained it is a rare type. The twin fruits have two completely different abilities, but you can only eat one. If one is used, the other will lose its effect. What are the abilities of the two fruits of sweet fruit? Edie then asked. No, I don't know. I only know that women should eat the pink ones, and men should eat the purple ones. St. Halifax hated himself for not looking more carefully. There should be detailed records on the devil fruit label. Edie was noncommittal, whose hands is this fruit now? Has it been fed to slaves? It should be in Roswald's hands. After getting the information he wanted, Yi Di immediately ordered Chen Long hook 730 up and take him to the port. In addition to the necessary food and water, let him dry in the Sunday. Yes. Chen Long immediately dragged Halifax away. Halifax shouted I already told you, why do you still do this to me? Damn humans! I am a celestial dragon. Then after being slapped a few times, he became obedient. Edie turned to look at Ginny. This woman was very frightened. Ginny, commander of the Revolutionary Army's Eastern Army. Yes, Ginny responded quickly, fearing that she would be slapped if she was too late, thank you for your subordinates for saving me. If Chen Long hadn't appeared at that time, I would have been doomed. She tried to use the grace of saving her life to draw closer to each other. Edie smiled and said in a playful tone. If there is no Chen Long, you will be taken back to the Holy Land by the Tian Long just now and become a slave. You will be discarded when you get tired of playing. Do you think the Revolutionary Army will save you? Certainly. Ginny said without hesitation no, the Holy Land is too dangerous. Mr. Long will not take risks. After the initial affirmation, he carried out self-denial based on rational judgment. You are very clever. Edie praised, and then said then will the Bartholomew bear you admire go to save you. I. Ginny froze. What kind of torturous questions are these? Will the bear go to the Holy Land to save her? She does not know. Do you want Bartholomew bear to rescue you? Edie asked again, like a devil. Ginny fell silent again. As a woman, she hoped, but as the commander of the Revolutionary Army, she also knew very well that the bear had better not come to save her. There was a strong conflict between reason and sensibility at this moment. In the end, emotion won. Ginny admitted that deep down she still wanted to be rescued. I'll give you a chance to verify the answer you just gave. The corners of Edie's lips raised, as if he was playing with people's hearts, you are captured now, and Beehive Island is far less dangerous than the Holy Land. Presumably the Revolutionary Army has got the news now, right? You can wait quietly for the answer. Devil! Ginny trembled in her heart. This is the Devil's Test. The subjects of the test are Mr. Long, Big Bear, and herself. You must come and save me. Ginny prayed in her heart. Ginny's prayers went unanswered. The Grand Line, the headquarters of the Revolutionary Army, Bartigo, the White Earth Island. General Staff Room. You can't go, Bear, calm down. Monkey. D. Durag, the leader of the Revolutionary Army, said in a deep voice. He pressed the Bear's shoulder with one hand. The Bear's expression was gloomy and he said nothing. The she-male King Ivankov said the beehive, that's by Mary. Where Joya was still in danger, the navy launched the demon-slaying order and returned with a huge defeat. It was difficult for us to save people with our strength. Behind Ivankov was a she-male with heavy makeup. Seeing that he was hesitant to speak, Ivankov asked. Misuk, what do you want to say? The she-male known as Misuk is none other than Kojiki Momonosuk. 
However, today's Kojiki Momonosuke has changed his name to Momonosuke. At 14, he is no longer a child. The beatings from society have made him grow rapidly. He grew up to the point where even his mother, Tengetsu Toki, could not recognize her. Her mouth covered in bright lipstick trembled slightly, and Momomisuk said in a fearful tone. Brother Big Bear, please do it can go, Mr. Edie is a devil. Um? Ivankov was stunned for a moment, do you know that scientist? My Suk. The new family doesn't want to mention it. The new family's mother and sister are still in his clutches. As soon as these words came out, they immediately attracted everyone's attention. Only then did Momomisuk suddenly remember that when he was a child, those happy times had been far away from him for a long time. The cherry blossoms in my hometown, are they in full bloom this year too? The slave family has always wanted to go back and have a look. I wonder if my mother and sister are okay. With that said, Momomisuk flipped up her long hair, which was dyed light pink, and her expression became melancholy. Listen to me slowly. After listening to this, Brother Big Bear, you will definitely not want to die. Edie didn't know that Momonosuke had become Momonosuke and had actually successfully joined the Revolutionary Army. He waited and waited, but still didn't wait for the Revolutionary Army to come to rescue him. What happened? Ginny was kidnapped by the Draco and taken to the Holy Land. It would be fine if the bear didn't save her. Now that he's been taken to the Hive, why don't you come to rescue him? Eddie was a little dissatisfied. You deserve to be called a cuckold bear, but you didn't come here? He originally planned to wait for Bartholomew Bear to come to save people, and take a tube of his blood by the way. That guy is from the Bacania tribe. Is also a superhuman meatball fruit capable person. It is perfect for use as a mass-produced mid-range combat power. Today's Hive Research Institute has earthly branches as a high-end combat power, and B soldiers as a low-end combat power. There is still some mid-range combat power at the level of the Shishibukai. He never expected that after waiting for several days, no one came. Thinking of this, Edie picked up an earpiece in front of him and spoke to the monitor the woman and said. It's a pity that no one is here to save you. Hive Research Institute, 4th Floor in the secret room that had been transformed into a prison, Ginny lay on the bed in confusion. This secret room. To be precise, this cell is a bit too luxurious. All kinds of furniture are expensive at first glance, except that there is no door to the outside world, and the small windows are tightly blocked by sea tower stones. Calling it a prison is a bit too picky, but calling it a luxury hotel room without getting out. Suddenly, a display screen hanging on the wall suddenly lit up. Unfortunately, no one is here to save you. The man's voice came, his tone full of regret. Ginny sat up from the bed and stood in front of the screen. I can also see the time here, and I can see the city outside through the window. It's only been three or four days, right? Mr. Edie, is it too early to say that no one will come to save me? Hearing this, Edie smiled. Do you know how long it takes for a man to sleep with a woman? My stamina is good for about an hour, but if you want to last a little longer, three hours is fine. Oh, sorry, you are an old maid and it is normal to not understand. Ginny's face turned red, but she quickly calmed down. Big Bear, really didn't come to save her? Edie's voice continued to come from the display. Bartholomew Bear a superhuman person with the meatball fruit ability. With his ability, if he wanted to fly over, three or four days would be more than enough. Moreover, including the time you were brought to the hive, a week has actually passed. Maybe they encountered something particularly important and were delayed. Maybe they didn't get the information. Ginny said something that she didn't even believe. Her eyes couldn't help but dim. Although she knew that it was likely to be like this, in her rational judgment, she also believed that she was not worthy of the revolutionary army coming to the hive to save people. But when she was really abandoned, I still feel a little down. I thought I could use you to attract the big bear here. 
but I never expected that he really wouldn't come. Edie was a little speechless, anyway, no one is coming to save you, so just stay here for now. After saying that, there was a pop, the screen was interrupted, and the screen turned black again. Ginny was stunned and hurriedly shouted hey can we talk to you? Mr. Edie? Lord Edie? Emperor. Edie left Ginny alone for now. At this time, the underground monitoring room. Edie continued to observe the holy land of Mary Joya. More than half of the 1,000 Bee Scouts have been sacrificed in the past few days, not that Marie Joya has any natural enemies. But he was beaten to death. Perhaps it was because of the incident in which Fisher Tiger made trouble at Mary Joya. Today, the Holy Land is extremely tightly guarded, and any slightest movement will attract snipers. Most of the dead Bee Scouts were shot by sniper rifles. Others were flying around and died inexplicably due to human activities. To read exciting novels, go to Feel Novel Network. For example, when Faye arrived in the study, the maid picked up the feather duster and whipped it off. Another example is, flying to a women's bathhouse, the frightened woman poured bath water on her to death. There are various ways to die. But fortunately, half of them survived, especially a few of them, which had already sneaked into Pangu City. At this time, the scene of the Wulioxing meeting was played on EDI's monitoring screen. That man suddenly sent earthly branches to capture a celestial dragon in the East China Sea. What does that mean? According to the information sold by the pirates on Beehive Island, the idiot in Halifax was stripped naked and hung in the harbor to be exposed to the Sunday. Not killing, but humiliating? What do you want to do? Wulao Sing frowned. We must find a solution as soon as possible, otherwise this matter will be in the news sooner or later. Talk to that person. Compared to the time when they would launch the demon slaying order if they disagreed with each other, the five old stars today have obviously become more peace loving. People will always understand each other, especially after a hard fight, this understanding will come quickly. Who to let go? Knights of God. Then, Eddie saw Saint Satan pick up the phone and contact Morgans. They did not contact him directly but ordered Morgans to act as an intermediary and convey the idea of communication. Then, another after a while, the phone bug next to Edie rang. Just as he was about to answer the call, Wulao Singh also activated a black phone bug on the screen. Ha ha ha! Interesting! Eddie couldn't help laughing. Wulaoxing ordered Morgans to deliver the message. Wulaoxing used a black phone to monitor Morgans. From their perspective, Edie was the party being contacted and knew nothing. However, in fact, Edie was monitoring Wulaoxing listening to his phone calls, and the audio and video were synchronized. This wave, is the victory of technology. Thinking so, Edie picked up the receiver of the phone bug. The greatest scientist in the world, Dr. Edie, Morgan sends you sincere greetings. Wulaoxing asked you to come, right? As expected, I cannot hide from your wisdom. Morgans said neatly. Anyway, he was just passing on a message Wu Laoxing feels that there are some misunderstandings between you. They feel very sorry for your capture of the celestial dragons and hope that you can release the hostages as soon as possible and allow Saint Halifax to return to the Holy Land. Are you engaged in diplomacy? Edie cursed in her heart and made a direct request I want a devil fruit a sweet fruit. I understand. I will truthfully convey your request. Is the king good? So, please allow me to hang up on you. Morgans hung up the phone politely, turned around and called Wulaoxing. In fact, he didn't need to explain. Wulaoxing had already eavesdropped on Morgans' conversation. Reply to him and we will consider his request. After the first communication ended, Several five old stars looked at Saint Satan. Saint Satan stood up with a cane in his hand and walked back and forth. Sweet fruit? What's so special about this fruit? Just an ordinary twin fruit? No, since it is what that person wants, there must be some problem. I have to think about it seriously, 
don't worry. Satan Saint fell into deep thought. The other four people were a little speechless when they saw his dazed look. It's just a devil fruit, and it couldn't be better to use it to solve this incident. They thought about it for half an hour. Tan Sheng's expression changed and he said suddenly although I can't figure it out, the evil scientist Edie must be digging some kind of trap. I think this matter should be reported to that adult. The remaining four old stars, outside monitoring. Edie raised her eyebrows and reported to that adult. Isn't that I'm? Just in time, he wanted to see what kind of clothes I'm was wearing. The five old stars finally decided to report the matter of Beehive Island to the real master of the world government. This was the first time they reported Edie's affairs to I'm. Edie issued instructions remotely, controlled a bee scout, and followed Wulaoxing silently. Soon, after passing the tight guard, the five old men came to a heavy gate. Saint Satan waved his hand and drove away the nearby soldiers. A red carpet was laid out at the door, extending all the way up the stairs, at the end of the ascending stairs was an empty throne. It symbolizes the idea promoted by the world government equality. There is no one to sit on the throne of the void. Click, click, click. With the sound of the door closing behind them, the five old stars withdrew their gaze and knelt down on one knee. Lord I'm, I have something important to report to you. A B agent hangs upside down on the ceiling, with a pair of compound eyes faithfully recording everything in front of him and converting it into radio waves, which are transmitted to the distant place. Is. I'm coming out? From where? Edie is holding it with one hand cheeks and legs crossed, waiting with interest for the appearance of the King of Heavenly Dragons. Suddenly. Zizi. There was a strong fluctuation in the surveillance screen. Um. Eddie looked surprised. This was a situation where the electromagnetic waves were unstable. Then, he heard a series of strange sounds. Hwalala hwalala. It was like the sound of waves hitting the coast. When this sound appeared, the picture became unstable. When the sound disappeared, the surveillance became clear again. At this time, a slender woman wearing a horned crown was already sitting on the void throne. Woman? Edie ignored the sudden fluctuations in the picture for the time being. Question, he carefully looked at Narana Zero, I'm Saint who was under surveillance. This woman looked to be in her twenties, sitting quietly on the throne, her eyes closed. What's the matter? She opened her eyes, and it was a pair of breathtaking and sharp eyes. At this moment, the picture was interrupted. The radio wave of Feng Zhen was completely interrupted and was never connected again. Is this, a question of domineering? Eddie couldn't help but ponder, it's not like he was discovered and deliberately attacked the Bee Scout, but it was directly shocked to death. When that woman Yi Mu opened her eyes, the domineering force she naturally exuded shocked the bees to death. Fortunately, he still had a few bees in Pangu City. He immediately called up the radio waves of the next bees and issued instructions at the same time. This time, the new bee detective did not fly into the room where the throne of the void was, but hid outside the door. Because of the delay, by the time Edie received useful information again, the conversation inside seemed to have ended. He only heard a little of the ending. Sweet fruit, no problem, just follow his request. As for the scientist, Tom will pay attention. Yes, Lord I'm. The five old stars bowed respectfully and exited the hall. Edie immediately controlled the second bee spy and flew in through the crack in the door. However, there was no longer any figure of I'm on the throne. There was only a slight sound. The sound of crashing echoed in the room. It was like the waves gently lapping at the shore. Hey? Disappeared. There is only one entrance to this room, how did she disappear? Edie looked at the screen and raised the corners of her mouth slightly it's interesting, Kfei, this woman is very strong. As the king of the world who has ruled the world for 800 years, Im's strength is a mystery. But even a pig has become a spirit after living for 800 years. Strategically despise the opponent, 
but tactically pay attention to it. If we could get her cells or blood. Edie tapped her fingers lightly on the table, temporarily giving up on this bold idea. The defensive strength of Holy Land Marie Joya can be roughly regarded as four levels. The first level is the naval guard. When attacked, the naval headquarters can immediately provide support very quickly. The second level is the Celestial Dragon Shield CP0. This is an organization directly under the Celestial Dragons, including various elite units under the command of the Commander-in-Chief of the Three Armies in the Holy Land. The third level is the Knights of God. The fourth floor, the Five Old Stars. In other words, if you want to force I'm out, you must at least break through these four layers of defense. I don't know how Fisher Tiger caused so much trouble in the Holy Land last year. Free the slaves. Could it be that someone wants to settle the account? Otherwise, there is no way to explain how a mere murloc could do it. Is the Holy Land's defense system useless? Edie couldn't help but make malicious speculations. It was like when the New Year was approaching and someone wanted to check the granary. At this time, a group of thieves would come and loot it, which would really help. Of course, this was just Edie's joking guess. He would rather believe it. Wolioxing is trash. Next, Edie didn't care about the Tianlong people for the time being. He stayed in the laboratory to help Whitebeard fulfill his original promise and cultivate a high-yielding grain species. This was not a problem for him at all. He extracted P4 from the bodies of Neptune species and made this special substance P into a fertilizer. In a laboratory plant growth incubator, the fertilizer worked to great effect. If this trend continues, when it matures, can a grain of rice still be called a grain of rice? Edie looked at the crazily growing rice in the incubator and fell into a state of doubt about life. From now on, we can't call it a grain of rice, let's call it a grain of rice. The conditions in the laboratory are still different from the actual situation, so it needs to be tested in the experimental field. After thinking for a moment, Edi immediately issued a series of orders. He ordered Chen Ho to go to the country of Wano and asked Caesar to rent a hundred acres of experimental fields to test the growth experiments of different control groups. Ripe fruits cannot be used and must be grown naturally. Let's wait a few months and see the results. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Philo Novel Network. After temporarily settling the matter of Whitebeard, news finally came from the world government. They agreed to exchange a sweet fruit for the Draco Halifax. Of course, Edie would not refuse. Just because of his jealousy, he made a plate of dumplings. Otherwise, he would not even bother to take a look at Amir Tian Long. The transaction process went very smoothly. Edie sent Wei Yang Hezi Rat, originally wanted to send Peach Rabbit, but this girl really didn't want to deal with the world government, so she gave up. They. World government sent a member of the Knights of God, a woman in her twenties and thirties, and Edie didn't see it. But I don't know what it's called. But that's not important. In short, after spending almost half a month, Edie finally got what he wanted. The sweet Superman fruit. This is a twin fruit. Rare. Judging from the plot, Blackbeard, who became the Four Queens, all wanted to seize this fruit it should belong to a very powerful category. There are no weak devil fruits, only those with abilities who can't use them. This kind of chicken soup just deceive young people. Edie doesn't believe a word of it. There is a natural difference between the strength and weakness of devil fruit. Boya Hancock is still sleeping in the number one special cloning warehouse, and he is not expected to wake up for more than a week. Taking advantage of this period of time, Edie conducted research on the sweet fruit and directly dissected the superhuman fruit. Because it was a twin fruit, he created two new ability rings in one go. The ability ring Tian Tian, pink, and the ability ring Tian Tian, purple. At the same time, while making the ring, he began the experiment of cloning devil fruit for the first time. This was the first time to actually clone a devil fruit and Edie could not guarantee that it would be 100% success. After a few days like this, 
the special cloning laboratory and cloning warehouse number one sounded a beeping alarm. Edie wakes up Hancock immediately. When the filling fluid faded away and the hatch was opened, Boya Hancock finally opened his eyes after many days. The first thing I saw was Edie, and my face was filled with joy. Lord Edie, I feel like I have had a long dream. Sweet dream. Edie smiled and handed over Hancock's favorite Chong Sam style, along with a pair of red high heels. Only then did. Hancock remember that she was still naked. But she was no longer shy, even she was very proud that her body could attract Lady Edie's attention. She put it on with graceful movements while recalling longingly. It was a very long dream. In the dream, Lady Edie and I got married and gave birth to many babies. We grew old together. At the end of the dream, I lay in the arms of Lord Edie and died happily. Then, woke up. Having said this, Hancock looked at Edie with a faint look in his eyes and asked her to continue dreaming. Edie was speechless and reached out to flick Hancock's forehead. Dreams are just dreams, people have to live in reality. As he said that, he took out an ability ring from the pocket of his white coat, took Hancock's hand and put it on for her. I'll give this to you. Try it and see if you can use it. This, this, this is, an engagement ring. Hancock opened his beautiful eyes wide, his face felt hot, steam was rising from his forehead, his body softened, and he fell into Edie's arms. Is this a proposal? I do. No regrets in this life. Edie. After receiving the power ring as a gift, Hancock was so happy that he fell into Edie's arms. A pair of beautiful big eyes are as tender as water, full of affection, and the gaze is full of warmth as if it would melt Edie. Edie smiled, cupped Hancock's cheek and leaned in to kiss it. Hancock didn't resist, but closed his eyes, looking like he was letting you pick and choose. A long time. Only then did Edie let go of the weak and boneless body in her arms and explained it's not an engagement ring, it's a kind of ability ring. After briefly introducing how to use the ability ring, Hancock didn't seem to hear. His eyes were as bright as spring water, his smile was like peach blossoms, his big eyes were curved into crescents, and he was admiring the silver-white ring on his jade finger without blinking. Are you listening? Yes. Hancock came back to his senses and looked like he was serious and obedient. Edie had to explain it again, sighing from the bottom of her heart. A ring-shaped ability device obviously focuses on ability, but it is most lethal to women. Instead, it's in the shape of a ring. Got it, I'll put it to good use. It's called Sweet Fruit, and it can last for ten hours after being started. Edie explained some more precautions, but seeing Hancock looking at the ring in his hand in a daze from time to time, he had no choice but to give up. Is this girl so happy? Well, this is the first time he has given out an ability ring. It was rare that the atmosphere was so good. So Edie immediately looked at the clock on the wall. 11.37 p.m. Hancock, come with me and I'll give you another gift. Edie took her hand and took her out of the cloning laboratory. And gifts. Hancock blinked, his face full of surprise. Coming of age ceremony. Ah. She tilted her head. Soon after, the director's luxurious bedroom was located on the upper floor of the institute. Under Edie's careful guidance, Hancock took a big step in his life from a girl to a woman. The next day, early morning, the maid's knock on the door awakened Hancock from his deep sleep. After waking up from the soft bed, the scenes from yesterday night quickly reappeared in my mind. Hancock pulled up the quilt and buried his head in the quilt, like a madman, with an uncontrollable smile on his lips, happily inhaling the remaining breath of Lady Edie. Tuck 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 tuck. The knock on the door rang again, and the maid's voice came from the bed outside the door. Lord Heavenly Mother. What's the matter? Hancock responded dissatisfied, please don't disturb my happy time. The maid heard the dissatisfaction and immediately whispered Mr. Hancock, half an hour ago, a group of pirates came to the port, calling themselves the Nine Snake Sea. The thieves are from Daughter Island. 
Daughter's Island? Hancock stood up and couldn't help but recall her childhood. She has not forgotten her hometown of Daughter's Island. Master Edie also told her that the earthly branches had notified the Daughter's Island to ask them to pick up people. But five years passed in the blink of an eye. For years, Hancock thought Daughter Island had completely forgotten her. Take the person between the left eye, I will arrive later. Below one person and above 10,000 people on Beehive Island, Hancock has already developed the temperament of an empress. Every word and deed represents the majesty of the Heavenly Mother. As long as he is not in front of Edie, Hancock, the Heavenly Mother, does his best. Yes. The maid took the order and left. Hancock then got up from the soft big bed. After she walked into the bathroom to wash herself, she turned around and tidied the sheets herself. A red flower blooming on the white sheets made her face smile. Red. She kept it well. Hive Research Institute, between the left eyes. Mother-in-law was sitting on the sofa, and a maid brought black tea, and her reception etiquette was not neglected at all. Besides her, there was a man and a woman accompanying her. The man wore glasses and had a scar on his right eye. He was sitting aside, holding an iron jug in his hand and pouring the last few drops of wine into his mouth. Silbarts Riley, the former deputy captain of the Roger Pirates. Another woman, slightly younger, wearing a spider-patterned top, sat on the other side with her legs crossed, holding a women's cigarette in her hand. Siachi, the previous emperor of the Daughter Kingdom and the former captain of the Nine Snakes Pirates. Not here yet? Hancock. Why, the mother-in-law couldn't help but ask the maid. The maid bowed slightly and replied Sir Heavenly Mother will be here soon. Heavenly Mother, Siachi raised the corners of her mouth and smiled playfully calculate your age, little Hancock is 17 years old this year. Maybe he is very happy to stay here. Judging from the attitudes of the maids and the two people they encountered along the way, this can be seen from the attitude of the famous earthly branches. Hancock's status on the island was high. Combined with the fact that the scientist is called Heavenly Father, the meaning of Heavenly Mother is self-evident. Siachi is pessimistic about this operation. Riley did not pour the wine from the iron flask, so he had to put it down and said to the maid Can I see the eye mouse? Lord's issue. The maid was in a dilemma. She was just a maid, how could she help the earthly branch adults make decisions? At this moment, the sound of high heels tapping on the floor was heard. Then, several people in the living room saw the arrival of Hancock. Dressed in a black Chong Sam, there is a little coldness on her delicate face. She walks in small strides, but every step she takes shows the gracefulness of her female figure. When Grandma Yet and others saw her, the first feeling she felt was that she was noble and arrogant. The temperament rushed to his face. Is this boy a Hancock? Both her mother-in-law and Siachi were shocked, she is a completely amazing woman. Hancock walked to the master's sofa and sat down, his slender right legs crossed on the left above her legs. She stretched out her slender fingers, and the maid immediately brought a glass of red wine. Hancock took a sip gracefully, and then said lukewarmly. How many of them are the envoys of the Daughter Kingdom? Behind him, Boya Sanda Sonia and Boya Marigurud also cast a scrutinizing gaze. The mother-in-law opened her mouth. Faced with the suppression of Hancock's aura, she didn't know what to say for a moment. What should I call you? Hancock. Please call me Heavenly Mother. Hancock snorted softly. Five years ago, Master Yudi asked Chen Long to inform the Daughter Island. It has been more than five years. What are you doing now? In the first one or two years, she still missed Daughter's Island and the Nine Snakes Pirates a lot. But five years have passed, and now she is focused on Edie. If the other party hadn't come from Daughter's Island, she wouldn't have even met her. I don't even want to see him. Thinking like this, Hancock suddenly noticed Rayleigh and frowned slightly where did the man from Daughter Island come from. He is, Siachi hurriedly explained. He is Rayleigh, Lord of Hades. At this time, 
Edie walked in from the door. Hearing his voice, Hancock suddenly showed joy, changed his cold attitude, and jumped into Edie's arms with a few steps. Lord Edie! Edie smiled and pulled Hancock away, and walked straight to the three of her mother-in-law and mother-in-law. The previous emperor of the daughter kingdom, Xia Qi. The previous emperor, Gu Luliosa. And Hades, Sil Bartrili. Edie smiled and said rare visitor, rare visitor. Xia Qi put out the cigarette butt in her hand and carefully looked at the rumored great scientist, the lord of the hive, the hive emperor, the real overlord of the new world, and the one who received the protection fee from the three emperors. Man! The first impression turned out to be that he was gentle and gentle, and his smiling face made people feel very relaxed. The appearance and appearance are all excellent. Standing with Hancock is so right. Xia Qi smiled and said should I call you emperor, or should I call you emperor? The name is casual, we came to pick up Hancock a little too late. Edie shook her head. If Hancock had just been rescued and Daughter Island came to pick her up, he would have agreed immediately. But now the situation has changed. He just slept with this girl last night and sent her away today. Is it possible? State your intention directly. Hearing this, Grandma Zee took a deep breath and said, The emperor of our daughter's country died of illness not long ago. After a period of misery, she sighed and said so, We want Hancock to go back and take over the position of emperor. Among the younger generation, she is the most suitable. Xia Qi quickly added when you were in Champu, the islands saved the three sisters, and we are very grateful for your kindness. Edie was noncommittal and turned to look at Hancock beside her. Hancock shook his head I will not go back. Of course she won't go back. She will always stay with Lady Edie and give birth to many babies for Lady Edie. Hancock, Grandma Zee stood up. Edie stopped her and said with a smile you just want a young generation with outstanding potential to go back and inherit the throne of the daughter country and continue to lead the Nine Snakes Pirates. Yes. Grandma Zee nodded with curiosity on her face what can you do? This matter can be solved easily. I can clone a little snake girl and let you take it back. Edie sat on the sofa, picked up the black tea that originally belonged to Hancock on the table, and took a calm sip, but there is a condition. Clone? Xia Qi and Grandma Ya looked at each other. What conditions? Curliosa, you were once a crew member of the Rocks Pirates. Silbarts Riley, you are the deputy captain of Roger the Pirate King. You two were both personal participants in the Valley of the Gods incident. At this point, after a pause, Edie asked seriously. When Rox was defeated, where did his body go? Valley of the Gods incident. To put it simply, in 1484, the Tianlong people held a triennial killing competition on the Valley of the Gods island in the Western Sea. The six treasure chests as prizes each contain six powerful devil fruits. For example, green dragon fruit, flesh ball fruit, etc. After getting the news, the rocks pirates took action and rushed to the Valley of Gods. The Roger pirates, who learned of rocks' whereabouts, also followed suit. The navy is on alert, with hundreds of warships guarding the Valley of the Gods protecting the celestial dragons and maintaining the order of the killing contest. Vice Admiral Garp also won the title of hero during this operation. He teamed up with the Roger Pirates to defeat Rox. Where did Rox's body go? Regarding this question, Edie asked Whitebeard, Kaido, and Charlotte Lingling, but none of them knew. The Rox Pirates are not a cooperative pirate group to begin with. All of them are overlord-like awakened ones and they don't obey anyone except Rox. When the fight started, they didn't care about Captain Rox at all. Where did the body go? None of the three knew. At this time, Edie threw this question to Rayleigh and 180 Gululiosa. Locke's body. Riley was stunned, and suddenly thought of something, and asked as if to confirm I heard that the earthly branch rat under your command is a clone of Roger. Is it true? Edie drank tea calmly, which was regarded as acquiescence. I see, you want to resurrect rocks. 
Rayleigh grinned. If you want to ask who is the strongest person he has ever seen. Rocks ranked first, and Captain Roger could only be ranked second. Don't do that kind of thing, that man is very dangerous. Mother-in-law sighed, but her tone was not so serious. Where's the body? Edie pulled Hancock over and asked her to sit next to her. Hancock rested his head on Edie's shoulder, with a face as delicate as porcelain and an elegant smile. His almond-shaped eyes looked at the people from Daughter Island as if they were there. Think. I didn't know that the person I was fighting against was a golden lion. Riley shook his head. Edie continued to look at Grandma Zee. Grandma Zee thought for a moment and said, Rock's body was taken away by the golden lion. Um. Edie suddenly became interested. After asking so many people, she finally made some progress. Just speculation. Grandma Zee recalled the past, at that time, Rox was defeated and the situation was already very chaotic. As the remnants, we each ran for our lives. The Rox pirates are also divided into small groups. For example, Stussy and Whitebeard. Charlotte Lingling and Kaido, these people will go their separate ways when disaster strikes. How can they care about others? Golden Lion is a user with Piao Piao fruit ability. He used his ability to tear apart the island in the Valley of Gods and flew away with a fragment of the island. Wang Ji and John were seriously injured at the time, and they evacuated with the Golden Lion. Rock's body should also be on top. After Grandma Zee finished speaking, she finally added this is all I know. I can't guarantee that the information is 100% correct. That's enough, Kraliosa. Edie nodded with satisfaction. Now that he knows where Locke's body is, the next step is to find the Golden Lion. Unfortunately, the Golden Lion can fly, so it is not easy to find him. Find a way to get him to his door. Xiaoqi saw that the terms between the two parties had been negotiated, and asked Emperor, what did you mean by cloning just now? Cloning takes time. Come again today, two years later. Edie pulled Hancock to stand up and said lightly Zi Shu, see the guests off. He led the people out of the living room. As soon as the figure flashed, Zi Shu appeared in front of everyone. Guests, it's time for you to go. Zi Shu grinned. Rayleigh stared at the other person. When he met Roger, Roger was only in his early twenties. The Zi Shu in front of him looked about fifteen years old. The similarity could be vaguely seen, except for the color of his skin. Apart from the huge difference, he is just a smaller version of Roger. Haha, <laughs> Zishu, do you know that you are Roger's clone? Riley asked with a smile. Yes, I also know that my prototype machine has a son named Podicus D. Ace, Zishu laughed and said, You are Roger's vice captain, right? What do you think the kid Ace would call me if he saw me? Riley. He really has an out-of-character personality, comparable to what Roger had back then. I'm here today to confirm your identity. Riley narrowed his eyes. Zisha smiled do you want to fight me? I can't pretend I didn't see the blasphemy against Roger. Zishu, if I kill you, will your Heavenly Father blame me? No, Heavenly Father is very kind. If you kill me he will take your blood and clone you to inherit the title of Zi Mouse. Zi Shu was so happy that this deputy captain actually wanted to kill him. This is great. Rayleigh was silent. Follow me, fighting is not allowed inside the institute. Zi Shu opened the window between his left eyes and flew out in one leap. Seeing this, Xia Qi said with a headache what are you doing, Lei Li? Just trying his skills, ha ha ha. Rest assured. Laili immediately jumped out of the window and followed Zishu. The rest of Grandma Zee and Xiaqi looked at each other. Edie took Hancock to the underground laboratory. What do you think about cloning you and letting her replace you as the emperor of the daughter country? Lord Edie, I don't want to be separated from you. Anything else, I will listen to you. Hancock looked obedient and obedient, and Edie smiled slightly. 
it was very useful for him to fall in love with the beauty. Then draw blood. To read exciting novels, go to Feel Novel Network. Taking out the Lancet, Edie personally drew a tube of blood from Hancock's wrist. It is worth mentioning. Hancock's blood, Edie had it before. When he brought the three sisters back to Wayno, he had blood drawn. But the blood at that time and the blood now are not the same concept. A person's blood factor is not constant, it will grow as a person grows. The stronger the blood factor, the stronger the clone will be. Hancock, you can decide the future of Snake Girl. Edie thought for a while and proposed three plans to Hancock. Plan 1, your own bloodline factor and the bloodline factor of the Nalia clan, is the plan used by the general earthly branches. Option 2, own blood factor and the blood factor of the Mao tribe, this is Edie's recent research, which can allow the clone to master static electricity and the ability to transform into a moon lion. Option 3, own blood factor and sweet fruits blood factor. Yes, devil fruit itself also carries bloodline factors. Option 3 is roughly equivalent to creating a person with natural devil fruit abilities, or it can also be understood as, the devil fruit has become a spirit. In fact, not only is he doing research on the natural devil fruit, but the five old stars are also doing it. Ginny in the plot, as well as Ginny's daughter Bonnie, are victims of this kind of research. Which one do you want to choose? Edie asked with a smile. So hard to choose. Hancock covered his face, feeling like he was having a hard time deciding on a name for his daughter. Suddenly, her eyes lit up, Master Edie, why don't you merge my blood factor with your blood factor? Then she will be our daughter. Edie. He said dumbfounded are you stupid? We just need to turn off the lights at night. Why waste time in the laboratory? Yes. Hancock's face turned red, his head was like boiling water, and bursts of steam kept coming out. After a period of thinking, Hancock finally decided on option three. The reason was also very simple. She didn't want to be affected by other people's blood. Factor pollution. If you want to pollute, let Master Edie do the pollution. Edie respected her choice and quickly got into work. Hancock stood aside and started, by the way, Master Edie, Little Snake which cloning warehouse will G be placed in? Can I have a room alone? I don't want her to be seen either. The number one special cloning chamber you used before. EDI agreed. The privacy issue is worth noting, so he simply renovated the number zero special cloning laboratory and separated 5.2 from each cloning chamber. Three days later, EDI completed the culture of the embryos and restarted the number one special cloning chamber. It happened to be at this time that Yamato, who was in the special cloning warehouse number two, also woke up. Edie asked Hancock to wake him up. This time, Hancock did not have any quarrel with Yamato, but instead dealt with Yamato's natural instincts with ease. Dotto spoke. She had already won. As a winner, she was naturally full of superiority over the loser. Yamato had no idea at all, he just felt that Hancock had become a different person, and he had become more beautiful and radiant. On the other side, Zi the rat defeated Rayleigh and also collected Rayleigh's blood. Edie will not clone Rayleigh for the time being, but he will save the blood for the time being. The defeated Rayleigh, Siachi, and others left the Beehive Island, and they promised the two will come again in the next year to pick up the little snake girl. At the same time, in order to find the golden lion, Edie issued a reward for the hive. Anyone who provides clues can get a reward of 100 million. If you can if you catch the golden lion alive, you can directly get 5 billion belly. As soon as the reward was announced, the world suddenly became lively. The golden lion fell rapidly from an altitude of 1,000 meters. Just when he was about to fall into the sea, he suddenly opened his eyes, and the power of the fluttering fruit quickly stabilized his body. Was that the overlord colored bomb just now? The golden lion had a ghostly expression on his face. This was the first time he saw an explosive overlord, and he had never heard of it before. 
Affected by the explosion, blood oozed from his forehead, and his vision was locked in the sky. The man in white was wearing a gun. Piao Piao, slowly lowered his figure. The two floated dozens of meters above the sea level, staring at each other. Interesting, right? Edie spread out her palms, and a red bird condensed in her palms again in the final analysis, overlord color is also a kind of energy, and the shape of energy can be shaped at will. It's simply unbelievable that you can cultivate domineering to the level you do. The golden lion couldn't help but marvel. Ah, Edie couldn't help but laugh, and casually scattered the birds in his palm. Why do you think this is a skill that requires practice to master? Um. The golden lion narrowed his eyes. What is his innate ability, joke? He suspected that Edie was deceiving him. Don't think of me as a fool. You don't need to practice to master this ability, unless it's a devil fruit. Think more, Leo. Humans are different from monkeys because of their ability to think complexly. The golden lion suspected that Edie was mocking him as a monkey. He said with a smile, I chose to come to the beehive only after thinking carefully. So, tell me the conclusion of your thinking. Edie's smile remains the same, but this smile falls in the eyes of the golden lion, which is somewhat heart-stopping. You suddenly issued my wanted order, are you trying to find me? The golden lion said in a deep voice I'm here, what do you want? Of course he is not a fool. It can be seen from the reaction of the navy that the navy does not want him to have contact with this scientist. But he is a pirate. He has to do what the navy does not want to happen. As for why EDA reward is to be issued. The two have no grudges in the past, and they have no grudges recently. Just information about his whereabouts is worth 100 million, and if he is caught alive, he can even get 5 billion. This is obviously looking for him. In the Valley of the Gods incident that year, Rox was defeated and his body was taken away by you. Edie didn't sell it, and said bluntly tell me the location of the body. If you throw an island into my territory today, I will let you go. Gee ha 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 ha. Locke's body? I understand, that's how it is. The golden lion laughed twice, as if to win back a victory in front of Edie even I have heard of your reputation, surpassing Vegapunk, a rare genius scientist in human history. In the dark world, do you know what others call you? What do you call it? Edie raised her eyebrows. Creator. The golden lion said in a solemn tone father of clones. Roger, Newgate. Kaido, Sengoku, the top heroes who are famous in this sea, have they all been cloned by you? I'm sorry, I haven't reached the level of the creator yet. It's just a clone of some obedient subordinates, not worth mentioning. Edie said with a smile. Humph, I didn't praise you. The golden lion snorted unhappily so, you are looking for Rock's body to resurrect. No, to clone the sea overlord. Isn't this obvious? Edie didn't hide her purpose and had nothing to hide. Gee ha 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 ha. Doctor, won't you join forces with me? The golden lion extended an olive branch and grinned with your cloning technology and my mind, we will join forces to destroy the world government. Wait a moment, Edie had a headache is your brain, a monkey's brain. The golden lion's smile froze. If anyone else dared to say that he would kill them immediately, but when Edie said this, he really had no room to refute. He sneered, I regret to remind you, great scientist, Rox has been dead for 24 years. How do you think the body will rot? Just the bones left. Since you know, the golden lion's face changed slightly don't you want to say that you can resurrect people even with bones? Edie was noncommittal. Resurrection and cloning are not the same concept. Seeing his acquiescence, Golden Lion was completely shocked. Can someone who has been dead for more than 20 years be cloned? What a monster is this? He took a deep breath and said in a deep voice I did take Rock's body away, but something unexpected happened in the middle. Edie waited patiently for the rest of the story. Rox isn't dead, he's dying, but not yet. 
The golden lion said with an ugly face I was seriously injured at the time, and I couldn't hold on for long even just carrying a fragment of the island. Finally, we landed on an uninhabited island in the West Sea. And then there was internal strife. Eddie smiled slightly. Hearing this, Golden Lion's face became even worse. Internal strife did occur. John and Wang Ji saw that Rox was about to die, so they wanted to ask Rox about the treasure he had hidden. In the end, they fought each other. Even Rox, who was about to die, couldn't defeat him, and John was killed in the end. And you? Edie asked. Gee ha ha ha, I am seriously injured, how can I have the strength to fight with them? The golden lion curled his lips then, the navy caught up. Edie frowned. So where is the body? The person who came was the general at that time, Gang Gu Kong. The golden lion said helplessly of course I ran away, and Wang Ji ran away too. Only Rox couldn't run away and was killed by Cyborg. So, Cyborg Kong later became a navy marshal. You mean, Rock's body is in the hands of the navy? Maybe. The golden lion is not very sure either. Edie fell into deep thought. After going round and round, he finally had to find a breakthrough from the navy. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Philo Novel Network. But the Valley of the Gods incident was buried by the world government history, Will such a thing be recorded in the Navy's database? Cyborg Kong was also killed by him. I should have known that he should have been spared. Gee ha 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 ha, what are you going to do? The Golden Lion grinned and said, Even you can't do anything about it, right? Can you still go back to the past? Return to the past. Edie thought of Tianyu. The fruit of time in the sky and moon can only go to the future. The ability ring time made with her blood can also only travel to the future. Unless you wake up. But unfortunately, the time fruit is not of the animal type, and Edie only knows how to help the animal type awaken. Moreover, you may not be able to go back to the past after awakening. Therefore, we still have to find a breakthrough from the Navy. Thinking of this, Edi said calmly Golden Lion, you attacked Marin Ford and were defeated by Warring States and Garp. After eight years, don't you want to take revenge? What do you mean? Literally, you could totally do it again. Edie said calmly I need to go to the Navy Headquarters database to investigate some things in person, and you, help me attract firepower. Myself. The Golden Lion opened his mouth, are you kidding? This is asking me to die. Don't worry, I will send two earthly branches to assist you. Edie remained calm. Of course, assistance is assistance and does not guarantee the safe evacuation of Golden Lion. You have so many clones under your command, but you only send two earthly branches. The Golden Lion shook his head. This plan looked unreliable and too dangerous. Besides, why should I help you? You threw an island into my hive today. Gee ha 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 ha, don't say that, it's just a gift for you. The golden lion narrowed his eyes and saw several earthly branches flying from the beehive island in the distance. He immediately changed his mind and said, Okay, I'll help you. This is a good start for our cooperation. As he spoke, Chen Long and others had already flown over and surrounded the golden lion. Lord Heavenly Father. This is a guest, treat him well. Eddie turned and flew in the direction of the hive, follow me, Golden Lion. Seeing this, the Golden Lion cursed secretly, bastard, you didn't give him any benefits at all, and you still let him do such a dangerous thing. Forget it, if there are two earthly branches to help, it's just a delay. Soon after. Hive Research Institute, between the right eyes. The Golden Lion looked at the big screen on the wall. The picture on the screen was none other than Navy Headquarters Marine Ford. He, Li De, said with astonishment on his face you can actually spy on the Navy Headquarters. The big screen was divided into six screens, each of which showed Marin Ford. The movements of warships in the port, the intelligence activities of the staff, the daily practice of the recruit training camp, in the Lieutenant General's office, 
Kizaru was drinking tea and listening to his subordinates' reports on Fisher Tiger's movements. It seemed that he was responsible for solving the liberation problem. The aftermath of the slave incident, even, there are scenes of the marshal's office. How did you do it? muttered the golden lion. Don't be surprised if it's a little trick. Edie held the coffee and stirred it gracefully, as soon as you confirm that the Navy headquarters defense is empty, take action immediately. Now that the matter has come to this, Golden Lion has no nonsense, but asks for benefits. What about reward? I don't need money, I have found a nice island over the years and there is a magical plant on the island. Are you going to sponsor my institute? No money. Golden Lion said angrily, I help you work, but in the end, I still have to give you money? Do I still have to thank you? Edie smiled and said nothing. He probably knew about the magical plant that Golden Lion mentioned what is it? Two days later, the waiting time came. Raid the Navy headquarters and start raping. The day when the Navy headquarters was raided and the plan was carried out. The midday sun is hot and the sea is sparkling. Naval Headquarters, Marshal's Office Yuan, Marshal Um? How unbecoming it is to be in a panic. Seeing a sailor running in in shock, warring states frowned and scolded. Just, just now, Vice Admiral Ghost Spider's warship was hijacked. The sailor spoke very fast, not even daring to take a breath as soon as the warship passed through the Gate of Justice, a message that it had been hijacked was sent. Request support. Hijack? Door of Justice? Warring States was stunned, hijacking a warship in the triangular current. As we all know, there are three major institutions under the world government, the Navy Headquarters, Impel City, and Judicial Island. There is a special triangular current between these three institutions. If any ship mistakenly enters it, if no one opens any of the three doors of justice, it will ships will be caught in the currents and go in circles forever. Ridiculous, who did it? Jean Guo laughed angrily. Not long after he became marshal, this was the first time he saw such an outrageous thing. The legendary pirate gold, Golden Lion. When he heard this name, Warring State's expression changed slightly. He had just issued a wanted order for Golden Lion a few days ago but he didn't expect that the other party would come to his door. He suppressed his anger and gritted his teeth and said, Golden Lion? If it were him, he could really do such a thing. What's the purpose? Ten years ago, the other party came to attack alone. The reason was just that they didn't believe that Roger would be caught by the Navy. In fact, it was not caught by the Navy. He surrendered. For this reason, the Golden Lion dared to come to the Navy headquarters. Make a scene. Say, say, our Navy is too arrogant. Seeing the Marshal's livid face, the Navy soldier suddenly became frightened and cautiously spoke he said he didn't have much fun last time, and he wanted to teach you and Lieutenant General Garp a lesson this time. He also brought a video phone bug and prepared to broadcast it live all over the world, boom. Warring states punched the marshal's desk and broke it into pieces. You bastard, I need to go meet him personally. Gritting his teeth and scolding angrily, Jean Guo suddenly stood up and walked out of the marshal's office. Go notify Cap. Before going out, an order came. Yes. When warring states, Garp, and others arrived at the port in Marine Ford Inner Bay, a warship more than 160 meters long was already floating over the port. The warship hangs upside down in the sky, its deck facing the sea below. Lieutenant General Ghost Spider, as well as many sailors under Ghost Spider's command, were all tied up tightly. Under the power of Piao Piao Fruit, everyone was floating below the deck with their heads down and their feet in the air. The Golden Lion himself stood in the air, folded his arms, and laughed. Gee ha ha ha, long time no see, warring states, and you, Garp. Golden Lion, you finally escaped from Impel Down City and why did you come to the headquarters again? Garp looked up at each other with a serious expression. One of the original members of the Rocks Pirates, and later the captain of the Sky Pirates, 
a great pirate as famous as Whitebeard and Roger, possesses the power of the Piao Piao fruit. Such a ruthless the character is a headache no matter what era he is in. Sengoku's eyes were cold your time has passed long ago, Shiji. Hey, being a marshal is different, warring states period. The golden lion waved his index finger, and the warship immediately crashed towards the port, including the vice admirals and numerous soldiers who were tied up with ropes. Aren't you looking for me? Send me a new wanted notice. I am coming. I also prepared gifts for you, gee ha 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 ha. Amidst the golden lion's wild laughter, the warship landed with a crash. A warship costing more than twenty baileys broke into pieces and smashed into the square in front of the port, turning into a pile of wreckage. Seeing this, Sengoku took off the cloak of justice behind him. Garp grabbed the clothes on his shoulders and tore them off, revealing his strong muscles. A repeat of the events ten years ago? Garp grinned, full of fighting spirit if I lock you in this time, can you still cut off your own hands and escape? Warring state's body expanded, and a golden Buddha immediately appeared. The Buddha's light shone everywhere, and the golden light flourished. Gee ha ha ha, who told you that I came alone? The golden lion laughed twice and shouted toward the sky help. Asshole. When do you want to watch the show? Are you going to make a grand debut after I'm killed? Hearing this, Warring States and Capucci's expressions changed, and the surrounding lieutenant generals also suddenly raised their heads. Colors of sight spread towards the sky. At the same time, two dark figures fell from the sky. Black with their wings folded behind their backs, the two people were like missiles swooping down on the earth falling rapidly towards Sengoku and Garp. It's the earthly branch. Garp's eyes widened. Viang, the other one is. Warring states had an expression of disbelief. Viang, who fell from the sky, also transformed into a giant Buddha and punched warring states. Warring states had no time to think about the other person, and immediately slapped him with a palm. Shock wave. The fists and palms collided in the air. In an instant, there was a loud bang, golden light spread in all directions, and the entire port was in chaos. The impact rolled up stone bricks and tore the earth apart. Who are you? In the chaos, Garp locked eyes with another earthly branch with a look of astonishment. It was a boy of about ten years old, with a face that was extremely familiar to him. Because, that is himself his childhood self. Ugly cow. Jonyu grinned, and at the same time reported his name, he punched his body with a punch that was wrapped in an overlord color, and hit his prototype body directly. Bone fist meteor. At the critical juncture, Garp came to his senses with great difficulty, and struck out with the same domineering punch as, Dudge. Boom. There was a loud bang, Everything within a few hundred meters was completely destroyed, and the port in the inner bay was completely destroyed. It became a battlefield for monsters. It's unbelievable. I'm a clone. Garp gritted his teeth and endured the strong impact, and was shocked to the point of losing consciousness. The young clone has the power of his peak period. In the sky, the golden lion hugged his chest and laughed wildly this is the earthly branch, happy, really happy. With this kind of fighting power, we might as well change our plans and completely wipe out Marine Ford. Gee ha 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 ha. Suddenly, a figure flew from the ground and approached the Golden Lion in an instant. To read exciting novels, go to Feel a Novel Network. That's a little too presumptuous, Shiki. A pitch black right fist hit the Golden Lion hard on the face. The left side of the Golden Lion's face was sunken and his eyeballs were bulged out. With a whoosh, the golden lion was knocked down by one punch. Sky, crashed straight into the square in front of the bend. He immediately stood up, raised his hand to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth, stared at the other party with an ugly face, and said angrily. Haven't you retired? Former Navy Admiral, Zifa. I have retired, but I am not dead. Zifa was naked from the waist up, wearing only a cloak of justice, revealing his extremely strong muscles. 
His right hand was wrapped in armed colors, and he had the title of Black Wrist, and he was approaching the Golden Lion step by step. Staff Lieutenant General he sat behind his desk and listened to the reports from his subordinates. That's it. Currently, General Zifa, Lieutenant General Garp, and Marshal of the Warring States period are fighting against the Golden Lion and the two earthly branches at the port. Viang, and a new earthly branch, Garp's clone? He had a headache expression on his face. When were they cloned? Judging from the intelligence, they only looked ten years old, ten years ago? No, according to according to the information provided by the world government, the growth rate of clones in the cloning warehouse can be controlled. The more resources invested, the faster the growth rate. At present, the clones created by Vegapunk can already reach a ratio of 1 colon 3. Vegapunk's technology lags behind ED, and the proportion that ED can control should be higher. So the answer is, nearly two years. Was it during the last Demon Slaying Order naval battle? General he took a deep breath. At this time, the door of the office was pushed open and a voice sounded. That's right, in the last demon slaying order. It was a female voice. Lieutenant General he looked up and suddenly fell into a daze. In front of the desk, the staff officer who was reporting turned around and looked around, his mouth widening in surprise as well. Peach, Lieutenant General Peach Rabbit. He blurted out in shock. Peach Rabbit. He frowned. Then, she saw Dao to his eyes, and a red light flashed in the corner of his eyes. The next moment, the staff officer who looked at him immediately rolled his eyes and fainted. You are not Peach Rabbit. He took a breath, that kid from Jun doesn't have such a terrifying overlord look. Peach Rabbit in front of her reached out and stroked her cheek, and the next moment, she turned into Edie. Edie smiled slightly I originally wanted to bring Rabbit to meet you, but she seemed reluctant to come. As he spoke, he sat across from the desk, crossed his legs, and faced the chief staff officer of the headquarters. It seems that Peach Rabbit is living well at your place. He sighed, when I found out that she had become a traitor, I felt very disappointed. In the end, the government looked at the face of people like me and Garp so they changed Jun's wanted order to only allow for capture alive. That child was a victim of the struggle. Please rest assured that she is living well in the hive and is happy every day. So, today's attack on the Navy headquarters was also planned by you. His face was calm. She didn't do anything drastic. This question didn't seem to need an answer. This man was the only one who could command the two earthly branches and make the Golden Lion obey orders. After a pause, she asked straight to the point. What is your purpose? Great scientist. Lieutenant General he behaved very calmly. What is your purpose? Great scientist. While asking about the purpose, his brain was also thinking rapidly. This man had just turned into Jun. Whether it was the voice or the figure, it was exactly the same. As the chief staff officer of the headquarters, Lieutenant General he had seen the ancient devil fruit drawings. This is undoubtedly a devil fruit ability. A superhuman imitation fruit, or an animal type canine fruit, a phantom beast, a nine-tailed fox form. Relying on this ability, he came to the staff in a majestic manner. Lieutenant General he sighed inwardly. Say, if possible, I really don't want to be an enemy of this kind of person. I want to know if Rock's body is in the hands of your navy. Edie asked straight to the point. There is no faster way than asking the chief staff officer directly. Locke's body, your goal is the blood factor. Lieutenant General He's eyes flashed and he guessed it right away. Judging from the Garp clone that appeared today, this great scientist is still collecting the bloodline factors of powerful people. There is also the Golden Lion. Since the Golden Lion appears together with the earthly branches, which means that the blood factor of this great pirate has most likely fallen into the hands of the other party. Maybe in two or three years, there will be another powerful earthly branch. I can answer your questions. Correspondingly, 
I would also like to trouble you to answer mine. This is fairer. General he picked up the hot water kettle on the side and made a cup of tea for Edie, as if entertaining guests. Can. For Tutu's sake, I can answer some insignificant questions for you. Edie picked up the green tea gracefully and took a sip. He is not afraid of poison. Whether it is the ability of the phoenix or the eight lives of Yamata no Orakai, he can easily solve the problem of poison. What's more, his visit is sudden yes, Lieutenant General he will never be ready to poison at any time and anywhere in the staff headquarters. You Sajai. It seems that there is a story between Jun and you. Lieutenant General he smiled faintly. Is there a story between a man and a woman? Even she was a little curious. So, let's start with me. How is Jun? You imprisoned her in the hive. Precious opportunity to ask these gossips. Is it not okay? Just treat it as small talk. General he picked up the green tea and blew it, I'm just a little concerned about that child in Jun. Edie was speechless in her heart. She was still so gossipy at a very old age. He had no choice but to answer she just doesn't want to leave the hive for the time being, because of what happened back then, her outlook on life and values are a little confused. After a pause, he asked it's my turn. Where is Locke's body? Don't tell me you don't know. I know. Where? Locke's body was once used for scientific research by the world government, and that was more than twenty years ago. Where are you now? This is the second question. Lieutenant General he looked serious. Edie shook his head, let's change our sincerity and be more sincere to each other. Why should a great scientist be as knowledgeable as an old woman like me? I have a very good relationship with Jun, and I have watched that child grow up. General he immediately started playing the emotional card, his tone was very sincere. To me, you are already equivalent to a son-in-law. I'll tell you what you want to know, but you'll also tell me some of the things I want to know. Kaido wants to be the father-in-law, you want to be the mother-in-law? Edie cursed in her heart. Sure enough, the grand line is not about fighting and killing, it is all about human kindness. Go ahead. What is your purpose? I'm asking about your ultimate goal. Lieutenant. General he stared at Edie with piercing eyes. Edie said calmly why do apples fall from the tree? I just want to know the answers to each question. It's just that in the process of pursuing answers, he will always touch the interests of others. For this, he needs the power to protect himself, so he has the plan of the twelve earthly branches. On the road of pursuing the truth, he needs a long life, so I'm looking for eternal life. Crane doesn't believe it, but he doesn't disbelieve it either. Don't you want to rule the world? The power you have now has surpassed that of rocks back then. His ideal is to be the king of the world and create a world under his control. This is the second question. Edie treats others in his own way. Hearing this, Lieutenant General he was speechless for a long time and said helplessly. Locke's body was once sent to Punk Hassett's research institute, and the world government used his body to conduct various studies. Saint Satan among the five old stars personally participated in a certain research. What it is specifically, I don't know. Edie nodded, you still haven't answered my question. I want to know where this body, or rather, this skeleton, is now. This is my final question, Lieutenant General he smiled slightly and said, this is the request of an old woman like me. Don't say it as if I'm going to kill you. Don't worry. I got the answer. I won't kill you. Please take good care of Jun's child. After leaving the Navy, she can see the world from a different perspective, which may not be a bad thing for her. With that said, Lieutenant General he stood up, walked around the desk and walked outside. Come with me, great scientist. After the world government learned that you had mastered the terrible cloning technology, it moved Rock's body. Two years ago, it was transferred to the Navy headquarters. The body is at the Navy headquarters? Edie thought in surprise, this is a surprise. No, wait. Corpse? 
not bones? The world government has always kept Rock's body? Not corrupted? He stood up and passed by when he was next to the unconscious staff officer, he touched the other person's face. The next moment, Edie turned into the colonel of the staff and followed Lieutenant General He out of the office. A war was still breaking out at the port, and roars and alarms continued to be heard. There was a loud roar. But these did not affect Eddie and Lieutenant General He. The corridor was full of hurried sailors. When they saw the two, they immediately stood up and saluted. Lieutenant General He, Colonel Scar. Our headquarters is under attack. Please evacuate to a safe place as soon as possible. Where is the safe place? Everywhere on this island is now within the enemy's attack range. Lieutenant General he hunched his back slightly and said without stopping, go and evacuate the naval families on the island. Yes. In addition to a fortress-like headquarters building, Marine Ford also has a town where all the family members of the Navy live. When the war broke out in the plot, the family members here were evacuated to the nearby Shampoo in advance. Islands Now that they are attacked by the Golden Lion, they naturally don't have this time. Edith followed Lieutenant General He. The two stepped down the stairs, passed through a thick iron door, and entered the underground fortress. Don't be so nervous, I never gave an order to attack ordinary people. Edie smiled. The sword has no eyes on the battlefield and no one can control it. That's right. If they are allowed to fight, this island may become a ruin. So after you get the things, please leave as soon as possible. To read Bao's Huang novels, go to Philo Novel Network. He sighed. Soon, the two came to the depths of the fortress. Compared with the regular buildings above, the depths of the fortress was a cave, and there was nothing here. Guarded by marines, there was only one entrance and exit. After reaching the depths of the cave, Eddie finally saw the goal of his trip. Rock's body was frozen in a huge block of ice. He did not turn into bones, but remained he looked like he did before he died, naked and trapped in the ice, with many solidified wounds on his body. What did Ching Pheasant do? Edie asked in surprise. No, that's how it was when it was delivered. Lieutenant General he shook his head and said, What you want is right here. You can do whatever you want. Eddie stepped towards the giant ice and carefully looked at rocks in the ice. To be honest, he had never seen rocks and didn't know what he looked like. Looks a bit familiar, looks a bit like someone. The corners of Edie's mouth raised slightly, thinking of someone he had never met before but was familiar with before time travel. Does he have children? asked Edie. No. Lieutenant General Crane's reply approached. Suddenly, a hand touched Edie's back. You have a very unique ability that forms an invisible armor around your body when attacked. Is it an advanced application of Bakey? The ability that only you have in the world. So, you can touch it as long as it's not attacking, right? Crane's voice was distant. When he said the first word, his ability was activated. Superman is a washing fruit user. In an instant, Edie was like a piece of laundry that had been washed and hung to dry. His body became a thin piece of it was lost. He lost his body, and the muscles of his body lost their strength. Even his soul was washed, as if purified. Um? Lieutenant General he was startled, looking at Edie who had turned into a piece of clothes, Still standing there why didn't you fall down? My ability was activated successfully. Edie, the thin man, turned around slowly. His turning was not like moving his steps, but light and airy, as if he was flying in mid-air. A sneak attack when I'm close to my target and about to succeed? Good strategy, pity. Red lightning flashed all over Edie's body, and he returned to his original state in the blink of an eye. Red lightning flashed in the corners of his eyes, and his body broke away from gravity and floated several meters above the ground. Unfortunately, the gap between us is too huge. Seeing this scene, cold sweat appeared on Lieutenant General He's face. It was indeed a monster. Her ability perfectly hit her and she recovered in an instant. 
why? My power can wash away the evil in criminals' hearts. Even if your domineering power is strong enough to remove my ability instantly, the evil thoughts that have been washed away. At this point, Lieutenant General he suddenly froze. No need for Edie to answer, she immediately realized the answer. Thank you, Lieutenant General he. Overlord's territory is the first time it has been cracked. You did not attack me, nor did you have any ill will towards me. Even touching me was a kind intention. My setting of soul also failed to take effect. At this moment, divinity seemed to be born in Edie's eyes. Even the slightest bug has been fixed at this moment. From now on, if any ability user activates his ability, the tyrant's territory will immediately expand. Unless he himself is conscious closed. As soon as he finished speaking, Edie disappeared from his sight. So fast, he couldn't see clearly at all. His body was shaken, forget it he couldn't see clearly, the key is that seeing, hearing and color are useless to this man. Suddenly, a hand pressed her shoulder from behind. I have never been evil, I am the truth. Hearing this, he plopped and fell to the ground weakly. There was disbelief in her eyes. What did you do to me? My ability, is gone, scholar.